This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want right here toll free. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got Ian here. Chris. And Mark. Chris Cantwell joining us from ChristopherCantwell.com. We can talk more about that here in a little bit. There's lots of stuff in the news, including an update on the young lady who was... She was arrested for buying water, if I'm recalling correctly, at uh, some sort of a convenience store. I don't know if it was a liquor store or where she was, but she was at some sort of convenience location uh, coming out with water and some kind of cop, undercover cop, I believe, the confronted The ABC her. police. Alcoholic Beverage Commission is usually what that stands for in most states. Something like that, yes. And uh, sort of like in the situation, remember where the rapper had the Arnold Palmer, the lemonade and iced tea mixed together, and the cop was out in the parking lot there, too, just accosting him, demanding that he handed over for a search. I imagine this was somewhat similar, but apparently in the case with the, the uh, college girl, the cop at some point jumped up on her car hood or something yeah, ridiculous I, like that. And the claim is is that they pointed a gun at her, too. Um, you know, Right, because so. she might have wanted to leave because this crazy man was well, they're pla- uh, they're, jumping I, on her car hood. <laughs> they, I think they were plain clothes, too. Right, that's what I'm saying. So he was an undercover agent. Plain cl- there's a group of people that <clears throat> surround her, jump on her car, and point guns at her. And then they're upset that this woman is like, ah! you know, yeah. like <laughs> right? For for water, well, you know, we gotta we gotta have that water pretty strictly controlled. Generally. This it's, is a free country, my friend. I mean, you can't you, freedom ain't free. <laughs> you just be walking around with bottles of water. You need to show where those water bottles came from. Do you have a receipt for those? Did you show your identification? Yeah, this is uh, this is a perfect example of how giving a badge to somebody can turn them into an insane person. Well, now, wait a minute. He was just trying to protect this young lady. I mean, she might have been under the age of 21, and we all know that people under the age of 21 cannot drink anything at all. It's the the worst possible thing that could happen, and we need to have men with guns out there to teach these kids the hard lessons in life. Well, there there was that petition to ban dihydrogen monoxide, and I That's do right. think that this is important to keep in mind, that, that water kills a it's lot true. of people. It's it's a terribly dangerous uh, substance, and it it's does probably need to be right under alcohol. I mean, you know, alcohol is very dangerous. Water probably right underneath that. Water yeah. may kill more people than alcohol. It actually would be interesting to see, you know, with drownings and all the other water-related deaths. Right. It's one thing when they're drinking it, but when the kids start snorting it, guys, I mean, it just really goes downhill <laughs> very fast. <laughs> So what's the latest on this case, Mark? Because uh, Virgi- it's not a funny story. What happened well, to this it, poor girl? It's, it's hilarious, is what it is. But I mean, luckily she walked away. So it's fun. It's easier to laugh at this than, let's say, the cop had put three bullet holes in her chest. Uh, you know, right. I mean, for trying to escape. It's I, yeah. You know, escaping felon rule. It's okay to shoot. Uh, apparently, by their rules, if uh, the cop believes the person is a felon and is just trying to escape, then they can just shoot him in the back, and, back uh, front, whatever. You know, no problem. The state of Virginia will spend $212,500 $212, in tax, taxpayer funds to settle mm. a four, $40 million lawsuit filed by Elizabeth Daly, the uh, University of G- Virginia student who spent a night and much of the next day in jail after seven cunningly plainclothes agents from the Alcohol Beverage Control Division ambushed her for the crime of purchasing bottled water. Attorneys for Daly reached the settlement agreement with lawyers with the uh, Virginia Attorney General late Wednesday. Uh, Daly's attorneys filed her complaint in March. The 12 counts include constitutional rights violations, the use of excessive force. The defendants in the case are the state and the seven agents from the state's ABC agency. The incident happened last June after Daly— Who are Daly- all probably still employed gainfully. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Um, the, this is the thing: is is that it's the taxpayers of Virginia that are going to pay this, and not these nimrods, these people that thought that it was a good idea to run around and mm-hmm. uh, you know just yell at or point guns or whatever it is that they did. I mean, how could anybody be expected to take them seriously? Well, got- it's, it's pretty sure it's the pointing of the guns that makes people take them seriously. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> they're lucky that this lady didn't uh, you know conceal carry and shoot them. Yeah. 
it's <clears throat> do we have is there a background to this there's got to be some sort of semblance of attempt to reason here right like they're not just like hey you came out of price chopper with a case of water so here's our guns right <laughs> i mean do they sell water in the liquor store and she's coming out like yeah, do we they, know what the location was does it go back into the detail in that story at all and i say, don't Where remember that she? but it doesn't um let me let me read it right here it's right here what was the girl's name again um her name is daily uh elizabeth right elizabeth daily that okay. sounds right so it says that uh, her then 20 and two of her friends purchased a sky blue carton of LaCroix sparkling water. Oh, that sounds fancy. So I bet it looked like one of those. I'm just going to guess, you know, if you've been to the bottled water section, there's always the $5 or like $3 bottles that come in glass bottles just because, you know, Designer it's not drugs. bad enough. To, right. It's not bad enough to just throw a bunch of plastic bottles everywhere. We're just going to go ahead and take even more weight and unnecessary packaging because this water is special. And it, it kind of looks like it could be in an alcoholic well, bottle. Well, it's in, um, no, it's 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 in a can. Really? Yeah. LaCroix water uh, comes in a can. And Even mm. more bizarre. Who buys canned water? Uh well, the only place I've ever seen canned water is on an airplane, and that has to do with the pressure differentials of the, uh, you know, the air, as I understand it, the airline taking off and, and coming down. You think it has anything storage. to do with the cookie dough ice cream? No? Okay. No, I don't think so. Um, no. They were at a local supermarket, the seven. Now, sometimes supermarkets will have liquor stores attached directly to them, depending on the state and the laws. Not Virginia, I don't think. I've been to their ABC stores. The seven agents sprung aggressively into action, suspecting that the student was carrying a 12-pack of beer. Uh-huh. Police admitted that a high-strung agent vaulted onto the hood of <laughs> Daly's uh, trailblazer. Not, <sighs> not the shortest vehicle out there, either. She contends that one of them also drew a gun. Daly, along with two roommates who were in the car, did what reasonable unarmed people usually do when violently pounced on by seven people. They tried to get away. They were showing unidentifiable badges after they approached us, but we became frightened as they were not in anything close to a uniform. She wrote in her account, I couldn't put my windows down unless I started my car. When I started my car, they began yelling not to move the car, not to um, not to start the car. They began trying to break the windows. Oh my my God. roommates and I were That's terrified. Ter- yeah, it's terrifying. According to the court records obtained by the Charlottesville paper, Daly grazed two agents with her vehicle. At this time, the records state that the unidentified passenger in the front Look, seat— Look, this is all worth it to put a stop to teenage drinking. Well, I, I think that—let's not forget that this is illegal. What? Um, they, they don't what have, they did? They had no right to search this woman. That's certainly true. Well, and 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 of course, if this was a situation where they actually were coming out of the store with a twelve pack of beer, like that wouldn't actually make the situation any better, right? Like, let's, <laughs> let's sort of acknowledge that. That if, if you walk out of a store with a twelve case of beer and a, and a bunch of guys with guns hop up on the hood of your car and start yeah. trying to break your windows, That's you know, terrifying. this is pretty bad even then. And then you're like, wait a second, it was sparkling water, and and, and, and the story just becomes even sicker. <laughs> yeah. And she's it's twenty. It's not like this is a twelve year old. Old, mm. wandering around with a 12, two, 12 pack of beer this is a 20 year old well, it would have who... been interesting to see what would have happened to a 12 year old walking out with a 12 pack of something in their hands i mean i don't know if the cops would have responded in the same way to uh, to a 12 year old it is as far this was a bur- this was a robbery um, is all this was. This was an attempted robbery, and if she would have squished I don't them, know if it's a robbery. I mean, usually if the cops are going to steal alcohol, they're going to steal alcohol. They wouldn't have wanted a 12-pack of uh, of water. Well, maybe they had been this drinking alcohol all night, and they were dry-mouthed, and then they wanted to steal that some water be. you know, to sober up, get over <laughs> into a hangover in the morning. What you're missing here, Ian, is these are not cops. These are people wearing plain clothes. Yeah. Who are Whoa. like? Let me see what you got in the bag, they honey. Don't, they That's don't what care. thieves do. They but, say, right. "Hey, what's in the bag?" <laughs> no, I, I get where you're coming from. None of your damn business. You cut me closer. I'm going to run you over with my car. They, to, to them, they're always cops, right? Like when they're in the plain clothes, they still have the uh, the yep. power of authority coursing through their veins. They're and it imbued with the magic right. that, of the tin that hangs on their chest. I understand. They, yeah. they are they are actually have it in their heads that they are a higher form of cop, right? Mm-hmm. They've actually like worked their way through the They're system out of the to uniform. become yeah, like you detectives. Know, this, yeah, I'm a plain clothes cop, which means that I was an extra special jerk on the highways for all these years that I've been on the system that they actually let me wear my regular clothes to work and assault people in well, supermarket yeah, parking lots. Yeah, they've graduated lots. from being a highway uh, a highwayman to basically someone who uses deception 24 hours a day on, on the job. I mean, that's 
That's usually what an undercover officer is doing. They're deceiving people uh, in order to try to get them arrested for things. Which I, I imagine think their marriages a, are working out wonderfully. Even more of a scummy <laughs> thing to do. 855 450 free. You take control here on Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Wake up and smell the freedom. One of the easiest things you can do to help Liberty is to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to help keep them drone-proof. You can set up your home computer to download and share Freedom Fiends archives over BitTorrent. You can even set up scheduling so it only shares while you're asleep or at work. Put your unused computing power to work and help keep the Freedom Fiends around well into the future. Simply go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the Torrent Club link and learn how to torrent and share Freedom Fiends archives. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Watch out when you're leaving the store with that uh, canned water. Apparently some police officers... 
tend to take that real serious. Like we're talking about the lady who has now received over two hundred thousand dollars in settlement. Now, of course, we don't know how much that's going to her attorneys. So let's just say eighty thousand dollars in uh, settlement. Either way, that's that is going to help her pay with whatever remains on her college tuition. So buy a lot of water. Yeah, it'll certainly buy a lot of ice cream and water, which was allegedly uh, what she was leaving the store with on the uh, the night in question when a, a police officer. Or more than one. It seemed like one was the real issue where he jumped up on uh, the hood of the car. Apparently, at least one of them drew firearms and pointed them at her. Very scary situation. Of course, what's actually going to happen to the police in this particular case? Nada. They're going to get maybe a memo or a stern talking to at worst. And at best, they'll probably end up getting promotions because in a lot of cases, when the police behave poorly, we end up seeing that after the internal investigation, they're cleared of wrongdoing and given promotions. In this case, well, the promotions are a butt covering for the department. I mean, well, these these are exemplary officers that have had one incident. And, you know, please. Hey, we're going to com- uh, continue. Your thoughts are certainly welcome here at 855 450 free. She's in college a lot of college students have it, have issues with the police. The police are targeting young people, and they love to target college students because they know that they can write tickets and they can cash in uh, from mommy and daddy who are going to come and bail But that's not what happened out. in this circumstance. This is not a woman with problems with the police. It sounds like she's got problems with the police. Okay, well, I'll be happy to finish up the story with All you right, and we'll see whether you uh, continue to hold on to that uh, opinion. Freedomsphoenix.com. That's where you can uncover the secrets and expose the lies. The readers at freedomsphoenix.com are constantly provide a detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. Freedomsphoenix.com offers up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. And, of course, that's what we're covering right now here on Free Talk Live. But go to freedomsphoenix.com and sign up for their free daily dispatch. So you were saying this lady, uh, this college girl, 20 years old, uh, she had uh, you know, walked out of the store. She had some ice cream. She had some LaCroix. Apparently, this is a brand of canned water, which uh, I didn't know you could buy that in the stores. So It has extra aluminum. Yeah. So uh, what what are you saying? She didn't have issues with the police. Well, let me finish the story because yeah. I think this is very important. Okay. okay. So coming from where source? This is uh, DailyCaller.com. Thank you. Um, Daily grazed grazed is the, uh, the the terminology here. Two agents with her vehicle, and they'll always say that this is a reason to shoot somebody. Oh, oh. the the car you know bumped my clothing as it went by. Yeah. I was assaulted. I may now shoot anyone in the vehicle. Um, we've you know seen things like that in the past. Sure. They don't so, even have to be touched by it. They can just say they were afraid for their life. It's true. Grazed by two agents with her vehicle. Grazed two agents with her vehicle. At this time, the record states the unidentified passenger in the front seat of her SUV was yelling "Go, go, go!" and simultaneously jumping into the back seat. <laughs> Once the three students managed to make it out of the parking lot, they called nine one one. Right, because Daily- at this point they thought they were being robbed. They, these were That's undercover exactly agents. That's exactly right. This isn't a person with a problem with the police. This is a person who is being robbed by a bunch of crazy people jumping in her car, brandishing no, weapons. But, but the police happen to be the crazy people jumping right. in her car, brandishing weapons. A, that's that's the problem but with that's the, the police. Problem. The but, average criminal would not have wanted to knock this girl over for a pack of water that she was carrying out of the store. I mean, even the average criminal is probably smart enough to know the difference between a 12-pack of Budweiser and a 12-pack of LaCroix. Uh, but yeah, the, the 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 bloods in the cribs very rarely go after twenty year olds with uh, with uh, fancy sparkling water. This is when they problem. do, they know what they're doing. What these nimrods didn't understand was is that a, co- a few college students wouldn't know what a bunch of plain plain closed individuals with guns were all about. You know, they expected you to just stop. Mm-hmm. And these kids thought they were being robbed. These people are unqualified to wear a badge. If anybody in the world is qualified to wear a badge, these nimrods. These morons, these mouth-breathing dullards are not them. No, I they think should they... be kicked off the force and put in garbage detail. I, I think I think they're acting like cops. I think they're doing what yeah. cops do, that they assault and harass they steal. innocent they people. And, and people. this is exactly what we're supposed to expect Look, from them. Look, Mark, this is a problem that college students everywhere have to deal with. It may not be with undercover officers, but police in general, both undercover and overtly uniformed police, pick on college students. I've seen it happen again and again. Let's go to Joel listening in Raleigh uh, to talk radio 850. Hey, Joel. Do we have Joel in Raleigh? Joel in Raleigh. Yes, going hey, there you are. We've got you. Hello. Go ahead. We had him. Right, yes, you're on the air. 
All righty. I just think this is a problem overall with the police forces uh, in our country for the last pretty 20 years or so. And what bothers me is just not their audacity to usurp uh, individual rights, constitutionally protected rights, but that the military forces are becoming militarized in their equipment, in their tactics. And again, I retired from the military, uh, and, and a lot of the things that I saw uh, fighting weapons, uh, armored vehicles that uh, I saw fighting in Iraq uh, are now on the streets of America uh, in the larger municipalities, uh, courtesy of the police force. And that should scare every, every, every citizen of this nation. And I'm not saying that that's not a concern, but it doesn't sound to me like this was like a, a, a militarized thing, right? These are their regular weapons, their handguns. These are just average plainclothes cops pulling guns on college kids. And which part of the Constitution says that you have a constitutionally protected right to buy like expensive sparkling water in a can? It's not, this is exactly <laughs> like. Th- th- this is what drives me crazy about uh, you know some some of the discussion of police like we're supposed to keep them accountable or hold them to the law or something like that. This is exactly what I expect police to do, unfortunately. And I don't. And if we're talking about constitutions, what part of the constitution says you have a right to carry water? <laughs> oh Lord, that's well. Okay, my point is, is simply this: it's just a, it's, it's just systemic of the problem growing with the police at large. Yeah, no, it's that much is true. The attitude of the police is uh, it's changed over the years. I mean, the, like the old timers. If you talk to the old timers, for instance, they'll have a different. A lot of them will have kind of a different, more easygoing attitude than some of the younger noobs, the uh, the badge heavies coming in. We had a former police trainer actually come on the show with us. We, he came uh, and met us in real life as well. I think he came to the New Hampshire Liberty Forum a few years back. Anyway, this guy was like, he was the real deal. I mean, he looked like a police trainer. He had the expertise of a police trainer. And uh, he said that he had to leave the business because he couldn't stand dealing with the recruits these days. He's, he said that in the you know two decades or so that he'd been doing police training, he'd seen a marked decline in the quality of the, the person uh, that was applying for these these roles. And he uh, ultimately said that at, at his end, when he was leaving the, the profession, that maybe 10 or 15 percent of each class that he would teach was, in his mind, the right stuff for policing, that the rest of them were a bunch of thugs and uh, wannabe thugs. But when was this not the case? I mean, we're talking about something happening happening in the last like 20 or 30 years i mean think about alcohol prohibition i mean there was absolute lunacy brutality True. going on with the police forces you know uh yeah, you just look at the untouchables right there's I mean, an this, argument this, to say that it's gotten worse though over time I mean, i'm not saying it hasn't been that the police have you know the police have never been violent in the past but certainly there have been uh there was in the past the idea of peace officer that idea is gone now for the most part it's been replaced with the idea of a law enforcement officer the difference between the old stories you hear about a police officer picking somebody up who was drunk and taking them home as opposed to taking him to jail. So it's certainly true that over time, I think that uh, Joel is right and that the police have become more callous, less humane, and uh, more dangerous and more militarized. Thank you, Joel, for the call tonight. The toll for, And that's what happens. They're a monopoly, right? So you don't have the choice to go anywhere else. So if they just keep getting worse, well, you can complain about it. But what else? 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Well, there's always cop block. In fact, I was on RT. I'll tell you about it. Come up. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows you can't afford to wait so call 866-91-STEEL lock in your price now call 866-91-STEEL that's 866-917-8335 on free talk live we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day from wrestling superstars like glenn jacobs you guys really are having an impact i believe like i said uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was 
kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit keenvention.info for more. Or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Coming up, 10 things that sucked about growing up a Jehovah's Witness. And uh, we've got Chris Cantwell with us, who is uh, famously known as an atheist. So it should be interesting to get uh, the atheist perspective on growing up as a Jehovah's Witness. Chris, mm-hmm. did you grow up in any kind of religion at all? Oh, man. <laughs> I I grew up the son of an IRS agent and a Catholic. So so the religion of the state and then Catholicism. Yeah, my father, my father was an IRS agent. My mother was a... Uh, I don't know if I want to say devout Catholic, but you know, mm-hmm. but when I was younger, we used to go to church on a, on a very regular basis. I went to religion class. Like I didn't have, a, I didn't go to Catholic school. But after after my state schooling, then on uh, you know Sundays or whatever, I'd have to go to religion class, and so, that was so. Like many I hated. atheists, you're uh, you're you're inculcated with some of this information you know about and bitter religion. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably understand uh, you know the Bible better than most Christians and Catholicism That's better than most Catholics. Generally, yeah. a true statement for many atheists. I think that yeah. they are more knowledgeable about uh, various religions than the religious themselves. So we'll come back into that topic here. Also, your calls are coming up. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Uh, and by the way, if you need focus and are feeling fatigued and trying to get the extra edge when it counts, look into modafinil from modup.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen are also talking about modafinil around the world. Uh, modup.net is where uh, some of them get it, and that is uh, making the difference in their work, giving them the critical edge that they need. Now, the people that aren't getting their modafinil from modup.net, that's they're probably paying way too much because there's a brand name out there, and they're not selling the brand name at modup.net, but that doesn't mean they're cutting quality. In fact, they have the highest potency. That's why they're the number one sponsor of Reddit's third-party nootropic testing project. So if you have already known about modafinil 
and you don't know about modup.net, go and check them out. You'll find amazing prices uh, over at modup.net. Now, remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. ModUp.net is also a supporter of the Bitcoin community. In fact, if you pay with Bitcoin, you get a 33% discount. Plus, use code FTL and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. So again, code FTL for Modafinil over at ModUp, M-O-D-U-P dot net. As we go right back into your phone calls and thoughts, Bernice is listening in Grand Rapids online. Hey, Bernice. Oh, hello. Hello, you're on the air. Oh, okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, go for it. Oh, okay. Uh, either way, my 31-year-old son is a ward of the state. He became a ward when he was 19. This was back in 2002. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, he's been in seven, seven different group homes since 19. I mean, I mean, since 2002. Uh, anyway, um, I don't think the guardian has him in the right home. Uh, you see, he has uh, been in mental hospitals more than once. And the last time he got out of mental hospital was back in 2002. This when he was 19. And um, they, uh, uh, Christopher was on our insurance during that time. And, uh, you know, this was before he became a ward of the state. He was on our insurance. And we also had him on Medicaid. Um, anyway, um they needed our insurance, you know, to pay for the hospital bill. So they, they, they did get him a guardian, but they let her be temporary because they needed us, you know, to to sign him into the hospital so our insurance would pay for most of the bill and, and Medicaid to pick up the, the rest. Mm-hmm. But after he got out of the hospital, uh, he got a full-time state-appointed guardian. And they moved him uh, to a home in Grand Rapids called Ridgeway. This home was supposed to be for people who have a mental illness, but he wasn't in the home long because I think he said something to a guy in the home, and a guy that worked at this home. Not, he well, said something he or he did something? I think he, he said something and did something to a guy that lived in the home. No, and I'm sorry. I might have missed it where you said it. What was the reason that he was uh, taken by the state as a ward? Oh, oh, that, oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, well, they said we, my husband and I, we used to be his guardians, and they said we were a hindrance to his mental health needs and physical needs. Did, uh, did, did was, they, if you, if you don't mind saying, and if you don't want to say it, that's okay, but did, did, do we have an idea as to, was he, does he have a diagnosis or something to that effect? Oh, well, when he was 13, he started doing strange things, and he said he'd hear voices and he'd see things. Hmm. And so we took him to see a psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist thought he had schizophrenia. And then we took him to the University of Michigan to be evaluated, and she thought he had a psychotic disorder. And he got evaluated by other doctors who thought he he might have schizophrenia or a psychotic disorder. And so so they they took him out of your guardianship at some point and and made him a a ward of the state. At what age was he taken? She said 19, 19, right? Yeah, 19, uh-huh. Uh, they said we was a hindrance to his mental health needs and physical needs. Oh, because, but, of course, the state we, is not going to be a hindrance to anybody's mental health. So now <laughs> they've had him oh, well, in their clutches since he was 19. He's now I'm, 31? Yeah, let me finish telling you. I don't uh, That wasn't true because we took good care of Christopher. He had doctors, and we took him to his appointment. Also, we had him on our insurance, and, and he was on Medicaid. You know what, maybe what you were a hindrance to was the fact that you were taking care of him meant that the state wasn't taking care of him, thereby hindering the fact that they could collect more money on their budget. Because usually these government programs for every victim that's uh, that's in their program, they're getting you know, 40000 20000 whatever arbitrary amount of uh, money in on their budget. So maybe the, maybe you were hindering their budget uh, budgetary goals for the next year. Yeah, this might this might be the first time I've heard about it happening to a, a person of your son's age. But I mean, this happens with children clearly all the time. That you know, the state comes in and uh, through CPS or DCF or whatever mm-hmm. you know the the local child trafficking ring is in your jurisdiction. I mean, uh-huh. come in and take take children away from parents. This is just the, what's unusual here to me. It sounds like is the is the uh, the age of the person in question. Oh, oh yeah, but like I said, we, we had him on our insurance. He was on our insurance, 
and Medicaid, but I was. I was oh, I think you're making a fine uh, argument for keeping uh, right. the, the young man. It's just that the police, you know, they can do whatever they want to do or the whichever agency it is, the mental health agency. So let me ask you this, Bernice. Oh. Um, do what do you think uh, Christopher's illness, if any at all, is? Do you think that uh, these are accurate uh, diagnoses that uh, he might be psychotic? Well, well, or? I, have to, I have to go back some. Uh, they did want him tested for special ed uh, when he was in the fourth grade, but they said he did well on most of those tests, so he didn't qualify. Okay. And then when he when he got in the sixth grade, I think this was in the sixth or seventh grade. He started doing strange things, and he said he would hear voices, and he'd see things. So then they, they, they put him in special ed when he was 13 or 14. And um, and do you think there was something to that diagnosis, that, you know, that he really was seeing things and hearing voices, and were those voices driving him to do dangerous things like kill animals, torture animals? I mean, what, what oh, were— Oh, no, he, he wasn't killing uh, uh, anybody. He, He'll tell us that he see head floating and and he heard people talking to him and stuff like that. Mm. Now, but, what uh-huh. is? How about Christopher? How's he feel in his? Because I mean, he's been in the ward of the state now for twelve years. Um, what's wh- what's his feedback to you? I assume I assume you see him on a relatively regular basis. What's his feedback to you? What's he say? Well, he don't he don't say too much about it. Uh, when he first went into the system. He wanted to come home, but he, I told him he couldn't come home. I bet they've medicated him real good since yeah. then. He's probably so doped up, uh, he can't even talk straight. I, you know, I wish you the best, Bernice. Thanks for sharing your story tonight. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I mean, the best thing you can say is whatever the problem is with your kids, don't turn them over to the state. Don't call the state for help. Uh, they're not going to likely help you. Sean is in Raleigh. You're listening to Talk Radio 850. Hey, Sean. Hey, how you doing? Real quick, I just want to say that uh, I live in Wake County, and uh, you have the Wake County Police Department, you have the Sheriff's Department, you have the Capitol Police, you have the TSA, you got the, the State Police. But driving down the road the other day, I saw a real nice SUV that had something on the side that said the Nova Agency. Well, I was so intrigued by it, I looked it up. It's well, hold on, hold on. Tell me, hold, tell me the rest of the mo. I'm curious about this. So hang on, Sean. We'll bring it back here in just a moment. More with Sean and Raleigh. Your call's welcome. 855-450 free. What's Nova? Crashed, the death of the dollar. It's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking. It explores what our government's reaction to a U.S. currency collapse would be. And when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order, the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is, we're not picking the fight. The government already did that. We'll just be fighting back for a change. This is a great book, but don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews on Amazon. Bernie says, Crashed is a really terrifying trip. It is thought-provoking. It makes you wonder, what if? Could this happen? Gary Jones adds, This is an excellent book. It is also a little scary because it could very well be true. I hope it's fiction, and Julia Moffat calls it a gripping read and the most exciting, insightful book this year. Crashed is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its Amazon reviewers calling for a sequel. This book is totally worth your time. It's well-researched, liberty-oriented, realistic, gripping, and gritty. Do yourself a favor and don't miss this one. Get your copy at Amazon. Crashed, The Death of the Dollar by William Cooper. I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair, pain-free, and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm Mm-hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs, and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time consuming expensive office visits no no and no no for a limited time you can try no no pro risk-free you'll also get the facial kit and a travel case get weeks of long-lasting results that's it i'm getting a no no great minds do think alike (laughs) try no no pro risk-free by calling 800-952-5760 Eight hundred nine five two five seven six zero. That's eight hundred nine five two fifty seven sixty. Eight hundred nine five two five seven six zero. It's the Onion Radio News. A family of five is found alive in the suburbs. This is Doyle Redland reporting. 
The Holzapfel family, long feared missing or spiritually dead, was found alive in the Chicago suburb of Buffalo Grove today, somehow managing to survive in the hostile environment for more than eight years. Rescuers discovered the five-person clan after a survey plane spotted a signal fire from a barbecue grill. To protect themselves from the elements during their long ordeal, the Holzapfels fashioned a three-bedroom ranch-style lean-to with brick facing and white aluminum siding. Paramedic Mary Gibbs was first on the scene. They were all suffering from severe cultural malnutrition. The Holes apples have been returned to civilization for now, though trips to the Art Institute of Chicago and a nice Peruvian restaurant intended to reacquaint them with urban living have been met with confusion and resistance. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you would like right here. Toll free numbers 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. The police have botched it up yet again. There's uh, breaking news out of Evansville, Indiana, where an 80, uh, excuse me, 68 year old woman have ha- has had her home raided. We'll tell you what that was about here in a few moments and you can bring up anything that you want plus the jehovah's witness story that uh, we have 10 things that really sucked about growing up jehovah's witness and you can share your thoughts with us on anything you want toll free number again brought to you by pro xpn is 855 450 free do you want to reach people with the ideas of liberty do it from the back of your car with libertystickers.com you can reach thousands of people a month with uh, with a bumper sticker and You know the people love to read them. Check out the vast selection of witty, poignant, pithy, and downright bombastic liberty-oriented messages at libertystickers.com. I've got uh, one on a couple of my different vehicles that I've got, and I love having them. One of them says uh, Barack Obama's fired more cruise missiles than all other Peace Prize winners combined. Uh, and if you've ever gotten one of our Free Talk Live or LRN.FM bumper stickers, those are also produced That's by true. Liberty Stickers. Yeah, you can get those uh, simply by sending a self-addressed stamped envelope. That's true. Uh, details about that are on promote.freetalklive.com. Let's go back to Sean in Raleigh listening to Talk Radio 850. So, Sean, you uh, barely had a moment before we had to uh, run off to the break there, and you were telling us, kind of naming off the laundry list of policing agencies there in the Raleigh area, and you mentioned one that you hadn't seen before. No, Nova, was yeah. it? called the Nova Agency. They got really nice SUVs with, uh, you know, law enforcement looking emblems on the door. So I looked them up, and it's a private police force that uh, company that uh, resides in Florida has been hired by Wake County, Orange County, and Durham County as an extra police force. And they have extra? The to, uh, you said they're extra? Extra police force. Hmm. Extra police force. So who's in charge the of them? Is it the sheriff? The no. Who are they taking orders from? Uh, their boss, which is a private firm. And but they've been hired. They've been hired by your local police agency, apparently. Wait, is that by the, the county exactly. or the police? County. The county hire them, not the police. It's it's it, what I looked up. They're employed for Wake County, Orange County, and Durham County. So they're taking orders from the county commissioners, not the county sheriff. I have no idea. I well, have now, no idea who they. 
Who they answer to, I have no idea. Because the sheriff, this can't be making the sheriff happy. I mean, the sheriff is going to want to increase his bureaucracy. A bureaucrat generally wants to have more bureaucrats underneath them. They want to have larger budgets. And if the county is hiring a private company to supplant some level or support the sheriffs, that's not in increasing the sheriff's budget. That's not going to make him happy. So I wonder what kind of internal conflicts are uh, are happening as a result of this. I wonder I wonder if maybe the budget was increased specifically for the purpose of hiring these people, right? That you're going to get a budget to hire your domestic Blackwater, if you will, that's going to come in here and do this. And this is some sort of kickback from, from political entities. Uh, you never know. Like I said, we got we got a Raleigh Police Department, and we have the Wake County Sheriff's Department. And on top of that, you got Capitol Police up in here because Raleigh's a central for North Carolina. Yeah. And you got state police making their footnote. And you know, we got a nice Air Force. You got TSA and Air Force Security. I mean, how many law enforcement agencies do you need in one county? It's you must ridiculous. be feeling very well protected. <laughs> There must be no crime there in Raleigh. Just make sure you don't walk oh. out of a store with a bottle of canned water. I mean, uh, <laughs> a case of canned water or a bottle of canned water. That was... So, right, Sean, have a good night, guys. Hey, Sean, thanks for the call tonight. And if you find out anything else, uh, by the way, about the Nova guys, let us know, especially like how long how long they've been there for. I mean, is this a new thing? Uh, has there been feedback? Are they, are they more brutal or less brutal than their uh, police counterparts? Are they more or less likely to harass college students for underage drinking? What kind of laws are they enforcing? Are they uh, just doing ticketing, like for traffic stuff, or are they doing investigation of actual crimes with a victim? I, See, I'm curious. As about far that. as traffic stuff goes, I just don't. I, I don't understand why the municipalities don't go for the speed cameras. They are significantly less costly than human beings. Human beings are extraordinarily expensive, especially ones that uh, can claim to be in a hazardous line of duty. So you've got 401ks or pensions. You've got, of course, all the insurance. Now Obamacare kicked in, so there's that much more insurance that they're responsible for. You know, a gizmo on the side of the road that just uh, clicks off license plates in the 49 states that allow license plate readers, unlike New Hampshire, um, they can just go ahead and yeah, you know, give people tickets. I'll, I'll tell you exactly why. It's because then people would obey the speed limit, and they don't want that because that would screw up the economy tragically. So, like, we have um, in New York, you can see on, like, the Long Island Expressway and at least the Northern State Parkway, there are these signs uh, that say, um, you know, uh, this many minutes to this exit, right? And it'll tell you how many miles and how many minutes. And mm -hmm. you'll actually see that the amount of minutes to the amount of miles actually would require you to break the speed limit, to break the law, <laughs> right? And the, re and the way that they're calculating this is they're actually reading your e easy pass. They have the uh, mm -hmm. they have these antennas on the highway. So theoretically, like, they yeah, could start... I've seen start, those things in Florida. Yeah, they could start sending you speeding tickets in the mail tomorrow if they wanted to, at least in New York. And they're choosing not to do that because they don't want you to obey the speed limit. What they want to do is, you know, catch you every once in a while and have there be some certainty to it whereas you know new york is uh, notorious with the red light cameras it's not as if they're doing this for you know some privacy concern right they're doing it specifically because they want you to break the speed limit because then you get to work and you make money and you do all the things that taxpayers do i had wondered that the last time i was down in florida we were driving down the interstate and i'm looking and it it was it seemed at least three per mile they had these obelisks on the side of the yeah. road, and there were clearly some kind of device yeah. looking down at it's the a unidirectional at the antenna yeah. that's there to pick up your easy pass. Yeah, and, I, and then I, I always did... wondered what those things were for. They're, they're, they're ominous 1984 yes. Orwellian devices. That's I mean, why I described them as obelisks. <laughs> they uh, should be like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They, they would only be crazier looking if they were suspended from a drone. I mean, they're <laughs> yeah. that weird. But if you keep an eye out for me, because you just, you know, you're going down the road, things are up on sticks. No big deal, right? But they're yeah. weird. Well, that's why. So I started doing a little bit of research, and I found out exactly what you were saying there, Chris, that they are using them for traffic pattern learning and, you know, probably using them to coordinate with, with the police whenever. That way they'll know where the best speeding locations are to stake out. Yep. So when they want to do a crackdown, they know the best areas where people are more likely to speed. And that's, you know, that's one of the times when they'll put five, you know, ten cruisers down past a row of trees and then just start pulling people over. This has been my contention all along with police officers. Officers, that they aren't there to keep us safe with the speed limits and that whole thing, um, but that in fact they're revenue enforcement agents. And if if you if they went ahead and just gave people tickets every time they they broke the speed limit, then like you say, Chris, they'd stick with the speed limit. And they go to their county commissioners and their state legislature and they say these speed limits are too low. 
But right. instead, when, you know, oh, I get caught going over the limit, I guess it's my fault. Yeah. And let's not forget that it's, uh, you know, it's dangerous to have a police officer pulling people over to the side of the road. Cops yep. are killed on the road um, every year. We never get to hear about, uh, you know, who gets rammed into from being on the side of the road. How many accidents are created because flashing lights are going on and people are rubbernecking. I can tell you I've seen two just as a volunteer firefighter at accidents because people won't pay attention to driving and they look at what we're doing. I want to go to the uh, Skype here. We've got the pizza dude on the line or pizza guy from North Dakota. You're on. Go ahead. All right, I want to kind of recap a topic I brought up when Mark wasn't around, which was a bit of a mistake, and hoping we could maybe get deep into it tonight. All right. So I guess to kind of recap the topic, uh, I really liked that after I listened to the whole conversation myself on the podcast. What conversation? Yeah. What are we talking about? Yeah. So um, what I like to, uh, it's about what should you vote for? Right, so if we take for granted that voting is something that ought to be done, uh, what ought to be voted for is the big question. When you when you ask that question, do you mean like what are the reasons one should vote, or because you know, normally you're voting for people, right? Like, well, I, know, I guess I don't understand what you're saying. Yeah, by what criteria do you choose the people which you vote for? Right, so obviously, if you're voting, you're probably going to be voting for a lesser of two evils. That's almost mm -hmm. a granted. It's right. common, but I tend I tend to try to avoid doing that personally. If I don't really feel motivated, if you're voting for a person, you're voting for the lesser of two evils. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's sometimes there's some really pr um, principled people running here in New Hampshire. They're still going to vote one time the way you don't want them Probably to vote. Probably true. And so, therefore, they are the lesser of two evils. Yeah. Unless you're I, 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 I don't think I've ever voted for anything. I vote against things. Hmm. Yeah. Agreed. I, I do pretty much the same thing. But what you're doing at that point is voting against the greater evil. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay. And so uh, what I really like doing was breaking it down into numbers so we're not thinking about people. And so let's just – for so it's numbers and we can think about it rationally. Let's call status quo 100 uh, violence or 100 badness or whatever. Um, you know, with the principle of harm reduction, uh, you know, obviously it would be rational if the only choice – the only um, viable option out there to vote for was a bunch of 95s. But there is a 50 out there, obviously – um, if you are going to cast a vote, you'd want to cast and support uh, a 50 out there, right? All right, stand by. We'll let you come back here and continue in a moment. You can take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Americans are reeling from Obamacare, higher prices, and an epidemic of policy lapses. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com has you covered. World-class medical and surgery at one of Asia's most modern hospitals. 300 doctors, surgeons, and dentists serving 300,000 patients a year. Fractions of U.S. prices. Friends or family forced to go out of pocket? Avoid bankruptcy. Tell them to run. Run like hell. Hit us up now. We'll show you how. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com. Did you know coffee is the second most absorbent crop on earth? Most coffee at grocery stores or in chains contains banned pesticides and has a high mold content. Seriously, we're proud to partner with Comano Island Coffee Roasters to provide the best of the best coffee, BuzzBox Coffee. Try a free pound today. You cover shipping. 10% of future purchases benefit our efforts to give the gift of human freedom throughout the world. At least 100 World Vision microfinance loans. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, August 13th, 2014. Gold open today at $1,310, silver open at $19.98, and Bitcoin is trading around $545.38. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. Online at rrbi.co or by phone 800-874-9760. In the news, a former judge with the secret FISA courts has said that a new Senate bill aimed at reforming the National Security Agency's surveillance programs would undermine national security. Judge John Bates wrote a letter to Senator Patrick Leahy, author of the new USA Freedom Act, detailing his issues with the new bill. Under the new Senate version, the NSA would be banned from collecting Americans' telephone records. Bates is director of the Administrative Office of the U.S. Courts and believes the bill's provision to appoint a special advocate for secret courts would impede the court's work. Attorney General William Sorrell has filed a request for dismissal of a lawsuit seeking to repeal Vermont's new GMO labeling bill. Attorney General Sorrell said the measure stands up to constitutional challenges by the plaintiffs. The recently passed Vermont Act 120 requires food made with genetically engineered ingredients to label their products. The lawsuit was filed by Grocery Manufacturers Association, the Snack Food Association, the International Dairy Foods Association, and the National Association of Manufacturers. The group say the law is misguided and will create a 50-state patchwork of GMO labeling policies. Well, this week has been a big media week for the so-called Liberty Movement. The New York Times published a lukewarm piece titled, Has the Liberty Moment Finally Arrived? The author mentions his time at the Porcupine Freedom Festival this past June in Lancaster, New Hampshire. Yahoo Travel posted an article written by Central Texas Bitcoin activist Catherine Bleich about her family's unconventional visit to Bitcoin Boulevard in Cleveland Heights, Ohio. The location boasts over a dozen restaurants and shops that accept Bitcoin. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Brave New Books, your local source for all things Bitcoin. Now hosting a Bitcoin ATM, located in Austin, Texas at 1904 Guadalupe Street or online at bravenewbookstore.com. And support comes from the notorious activist Michael Cargill. He has a new show called Come and Talk It, live each Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock on 1370 a.m. in Austin. That's 1370 a.m. Sundays at 4. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, August 13th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. On Monday, Amtrak's Inspector General released a report detailing how the DEA paid an Amtrak employee hundreds of thousands of dollars for confidential passenger information that's already available for free. The report details how the DEA paid an Amtrak secretary more than $854,000 to inform the agency of passengers' detailed information, although the DEA has access to the information free of cost. Amtrak is an independent business that operates an internal police agency that works with the DEA in a joint drug enforcement task force. Amtrak Inspector General Tom Howard's report suggested policy changes, while DEA Administrator Michelle Leonhardt and Senator Chuck Grassley called the expenses unnecessary and stated the incident raises serious questions about the DEA's practices. According to BitcoinAgile.com, a new record for real estate purchased with Bitcoin may have been set. A luxury retreat called Martis Camp near Lake Tahoe has sold their final 1.4-acre underdeveloped plot. The land was sold for $1.6 million, and the transaction was handled via BitPay. The previous known record for property purchased with Bitcoin was a villa valued at $500,000 in Bali this past spring. According to the Daily Dot, there are Legos slowly appearing on beaches across the globe. The Legos were dumped into the sea when a wave knocked dozens of cargo shipping containers off a boat called the Tokyo Express in 97. Ironically, many of the lost Lego pieces are themed around deep sea diving and included seaweed, scuba tanks, octopuses, and pirates. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's, non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high fructose corn syrup in anything. Visit them at one of their two locations in Austin, 500 East Benway Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande near the UT campus. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, August 13th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting.
I recently signed up for one of these self-defense classes and brought along a camera crew to watch. Take a good look at this class instructor. Thank you very much. Boy, was he smooth. He tried to butter us up with flowery compliments like, good work, nice try. Yeah. Yeah. But don't worry, folks, I wasn't letting my guard down for one yeah. second. Maybe he wasn't planning to attack me at all, but he could potentially plan to attack me at some point, and that left only one option. Take him out first. This is him. This is the guy. My quarry approached, and when the moment was right, I struck. Oh! I knew he'd be able to counter my every move if I just did what he had taught me, so instead, I did exactly the opposite. I beat him with a baseball bat. I am Shelby Cross! Do not ever attack me! Now, folks, I acknowledge that this man may have never been a threat, but a potential threat is just as dangerous as a real one. I don't play games with my life, and neither should you, and that's it. This is the Onion News Network. It's free talk live. We're launching into the second hour of the program. Plenty of time for your calls and thoughts about whatever's on your mind. Just dial in toll free. We got SWAT team raiding in the home of an elderly lady and 10 things that sucked about growing up as a Jehovah's Witness. We'll share those with you and your calls and thoughts are certainly welcome. We have the pizza guy on the line. It's Ian, Chris, and Mark with you here tonight. But uh, Pizza Dude on the line from North Dakota, you were getting into a discussion. You said Mark wasn't here the last time you called about this and you wanted to get his perspective. And you were describing uh, putting politicians on some sort of a rating scale that 100 would be the status quo of you know total violence that we currently have today in the state and that a you know lower than 100 number rating would be somebody who supports less violence you gave a 50 as an as, as an example like a human a politician who is less violent uh, than the others that's kind of where you were going go ahead sure it was where i was going and um so, and I guess the, the point that I didn't make that I think uh, becomes salient uh, in this discussion, because I, I know how dead set against you are, um, against what I see as the, as the 50, is that the politician that would be the middle ground between where we are now and, and lib pair libertarian paradise, the politician that would be that middle ground, dirty, filthy compromise that compromise, that politician would have to advocate for that middle ground. So what I'm trying to say is that if you support compromise and you support incrementalism, to get from here to there, you have to support somebody who advocates that middle ground. So everything they say <laughs> won't necessarily be principled, liberty-oriented, because they'll be a disgusting, filthy, ridiculous politician, and that's exactly what it'll look like. So they so won't. They I've won't had, say the right thing. Uh, yeah, it's not that I disagree with you. I certainly don't. I believe that uh, one thing's for certain: we're going to have. I assume you're talking about Rand Paul. Sure. And I'm going to. That's assume, only because I to I told you that was off the air. That was what. No, was I know about. what. Uh, I, I. You would have figured it out. I, on your I've, own? I've got this all figured out. Okay. Um and. Well, first off, I find this all ridiculous. I completely dismiss why. Ian's opinion on this because Rand Paul said nasty things about pot smokers, and that is Ian's one particular issue. What the issue. hell are you talking about? Rand Paul also said nasty things about immigrants. He also said nasty things about uh, committing war on his people. His dad around wasn't particularly world. great on immigrants either. His dad was better than Rand Paul was, and his dad was better on so many different issues than Rand, uh, Rand Paul. I'm not so sure that, that Ron Paul was any better than Rand Paul when it came to immigration or, or to gays or any number of other subjects, but go ahead, Here, Mark. Here's another know. point, though. Here's another point, though. Rand Paul said, yeah, he's a politician. He's opening his mouth. He's lying. He's a libertarian Frank Underwood, and, I, and, I, and if anybody's watched House of Cards or hasn't, then I'm sorry if you don't get the reference, but I mean, it's this thing that you're going to basically go into Washington, and you're going to play the game, and you're going to go, ridiculous. you're going to hustle all these people, and you're going to gain the power, and then all of a sudden, things are going to be so much better because you went and screwed over. Look, Rand Paul has both libertarians and neocon warhawks eating out of the same trough, okay? Somebody's getting screwed here, all right? And usually, my study of history leads me to believe 
It's the libertarians. It's the people who care about freedom who get screwed when we're dealing with the state. But he's screwing somebody over to master the art of political doublespeak in such a fashion as to have John McCain and Ron Paul fans eating out of the same trough. Is He's lying to someone really badly. Well, and, and here, unique. That's unique. That's different. That's new. I have never it's not ooh, new. Lying. Ooh, let's get excited about a politician <laughs> who's going to tell lies. And you what? know, just listening to you, uh, Pizza Guy, it was it's so disheartening. I mean, hearing somebody who knows the ideas of freedom listening to you ex make excuses for a guy who you believe is telling lies. You're coming right out and you're saying you think this guy is lying to people, and you're excited about that. I mean, to me, that's twisted. Yeah. What, Mark, you said you support Rand Paul, though. So, I want to hear Mark's end of this. Okay, so I'm I'm of the opinion that uh, that Rand Paul is a better choice um, of uh, president than the vast majority of candidates that will be available. And so, therefore, I'm going to support him in the primary. I'm going to have to vote for – I don't have to vote for somebody, but – if I don't, other people will vote for somebody in the primary. Also, I don't think the primary can be argued at any point to be aggression against your neighbor because it is not binding. The person who wins the primary is not uh, the president. And that's the only election we need to look at right now. So um, if, you know, you're, you're not going to go in and vote Republican, Ian. You're running Democrat. So your opinion is moot in this circumstance. It doesn't matter what you say. The only thing that matters is what Republicans um, no, it choose. No, I'm, I'm a registered Republican. Okay, so. It does matter, actually, what I say, because we're having a discussion on the radio <laughs> where people are thinking, hmm, should I support this character? And I'd like to give reasons why this is absolutely ridiculous, especially when I hear so the So who should they guy. support in the primary? I don't care. Nobody. They're all a bunch of scumbags. See, Look, that is not an it answer. It doesn't matter. You will have a president in 2016, you Nimrod. No, I you will might not. As well. Yes, I you do will. not have a president. I'm not interested in Enough having a president. Enough people in the United States will have a president that they can put a bullet in your head. So That's therefore, fine. you'll Go have ahead. a president. They know where to find me. So anyway, the point I wanted to make here was listening to you, pizza guy, say that this guy is going to be a halfway mark between here and libertarian paradise? Are you kidding me? You really think you can elect your way out of the hell that is Washington, D.C.? That now, I pretty be much agree with you on this one. That's why it's all pointless. Why would I want to support a candidate in any way, shape, or form who isn't talking about principle? At least with the Libertarian Party candidate, like in the year 2000, killing. Harry Brown was a principled individual who was bringing the ideas of freedom to the table. To me, that's what a political campaign is for. I'm not running for governor in New Hampshire because I think I'm going to win or even desire to win. I'm running so I can put the ideas of liberty out so people can experience them, can they, they can assess them, and Rand Paul's not doing that, as you've pointed out. He's this kind of halfway guy who's telling lies so he can get into office from, from your perspective. That's well, not exciting. It's not spreading the ideas of liberty. It's just confusing people. It's muddying the term of libertarianism. This guy is bad news. Let me ask no, you this. Uh, uh, pizza guy, let me ask you this. I think this, this is a really important question. So Rand Paul is going to get a call to libertarian from now until the day he's elected or loses, right? Um, and therefore, and the chances are good that a man who gets elected president is not going to be able to enact enough uh, libertarian-oriented policies. And even these liberty-oriented policies are likely to take more than four years to turn around. Don't you think that it's true that a, that a liberty-oriented candidate or even a halfway liberty-oriented candidate – could very well be as much of a much do as much damage to the ideas of liberty as they could help. So it has to do with humility, right? So I I don't I'm not a god. I'm just, I wish I was. I I think I am in the back of my mind, but I'm really I got gotcha. you. Same here. I don't I don't know how we get from here to there. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or the next day. The only thing I can do is take a look at the world around me. And this is, and you guys get into this all the time. This is the bigger philosophical issue. And it's all about epistemology and lack of knowledge. I don't know what anybody wants or anybody's thinking. I always have to try to imagine everybody has the best of intentions. And they and don't. I have to look at how we get from here to there. There's so many different possibilities. One of them is that everything just collapses and we start over. That's a possibility. I don't know. That's definitely not where I wanted to be. Do I think the political process can work? No, I don't. I don't. I'm I'm so with you, Ian. I don't believe. So why that work yourself up over a half-ass candidate like because Rand Paul? I don't know that it won't work. Here's here's and here's if what it I want to work. If it is going to work, if we're going to go, if we're going to have a peaceful political revolution from here to there, if it is going to work politically, I don't know if it will. I don't know that it won't. I don't know. It's it's all about humility. 
I don't know if it is or is not going to work. Where's Rand Paul's humility? There's only one way from here to there, and Rand Paul is what that middle oh, ground looks like. If it's going to that's, holy that's, grail okay, so of politics. You, you've you've sort of gone through a a number of different fallacies, and it's going to be difficult to address them in the in the you know two hours that we have left of the show. But the, <laughs> but you know, first of all, you're saying you know uh, if there's there's got to be more than one way to you know a, a given goal. So if something is not necessarily good, then there's no reason to pursue it because there are other ways of going about it. When we're talking about, especially when we're dealing with ideological libertarians, the reason I don't want to encourage them to support a guy like Rand Paul is because it di- it dilutes the message, okay? Mm-hmm. And and I'm somebody who who argues with other anarchists about diluting the message, much less a guy who like Rand Paul who's going to you know support wars and all of this stuff, man. I mean, it's like um, <clears throat> not to mention people are going to be sending this guy money. You're talking about how how is uh, the the resources that are expended in the libertarian movement. There's a lot of different things. Let's that we come can back do. with this here in moments, and if you want, you can hang on for it, Pizza Guy. 855 450 free. You can share your thoughts here on Free Talk Live. Crashed. The Death of the Dollar. It's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking. It explores what our government's reaction to a U.S. currency collapse would be. And when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order, the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is, we're not picking the fight. The government already did that. We'll just be fighting back for a change. This is a great book, but don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews on Amazon. Bernie says, Crashed is a really terrifying trip. It is thought-provoking. It makes you wonder, what if? Could this happen? Gary Jones ads this is an excellent book it is also a little scary because it could very well be true i hope it's fiction and julia moffett calls it a gripping read and the most exciting insightful book this year crashed is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its amazon reviewers calling for a sequel this book is totally worth your time it's well researched liberty oriented realistic gripping and gritty do yourself a favor and don't miss this one get your copy at amazon crashed the death of the dollar by william cooper Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. 
if he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Talk Live. Take control. Toll free. 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. We're talking about changing the federal government. Boy, talk about a, a futile discussion. But we're, we'll continue it here in a moment because we're happy to have those here on Free Talk Live. The toll-free number is 855-453. In fact, I've got a study out that shows that you have next to zero impact on uh, U.S. policy. You, unless you're a mega corporation or something like that. We can get into that a little bit more here in a moment. Get yourself some Bitcoin. It's uh, The prices are down a little bit on Bitcoin. It's a buying opportunity, looks like to me. You can go to ExpressCoin.com and get, well, Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin, a lot of different uh, cryptocurrencies there. They make it easy for you. It's fast and safe and completely legal, inexpensive. They pride themselves on their customer service, so much so that they just recently redid their website, increasing the back end so they can serve you better. Get your cryptocurrencies with a money order check or wire transfer. You can even do it from a local credit union that has shared branching. Just go in, you make a deposit. Within a business day, you've got your cryptocurrencies um, transferred right into your account. But you've got to start off at ExpressCoin.com. Now, you can even start off with the app. Go to ExpressCoin.com, download it, use your phone. ExpressCoin.com, yes, now in Canada. Use coupon code FTL, get up to $40 of Bitcoin at no fee at all. That's coupon code FTL at ExpressCoin.com. All right, we go back to uh, the pizza guy. I don't remember who was trying to make a point when we were going away. It was Rand Paul, Rand Paul. I was going off a little okay. bit here. And, and and the thing is that I have with electoral politics, and look, there are, and I gave a similar discussion at the Libertarian Party convention in Suffolk and Nassau counties in, in New York before I left for New Hampshire, which is basically like the the. the purpose of them is not necessarily to be trying to win these elections okay go forth when you're when you're a candidate for public office people are listening to you it's an opportunity to get the message out to, to people that they wouldn't you wouldn't know you would not normally otherwise get as Absolutely. we saw with you at the at the uh the debate which your opponent never showed up for it's yes. a good opportunity to talk to people and spread a message so if somebody's a good messenger i don't have any problem with them running for office right when i have a what i have a problem with with guys like Rand paul is that they are going to sap resources away from the libertarian movement so say that the the maximum uh you know contribution is like twenty four hundred dollars and i think it's twenty four hundred during the primary and then twenty four hundred during the actual race and this is okay so now someone's going to go and donate forty eight hundred dollars to Rand paul's candidacy which is not going to effectively spread the message of liberty at all no it's because really as, not do as that. pizza guy admitted earlier he's already compromised he was talking exactly. about if you support compromise and if you support incrementalism i don't well no what i support is people bringing the ideas of liberty to the table i understand understand that that will inevitably result in compromise but like here in new hampshire i'd rather have people come into the state house talking about ending prohibition and then we can meet in the middle on ending cannabis prohibition okay. you know? so i don't want to narrow the discussion but if you if you think about people there are people who love the status quo think about the people who are like oh 100 violence this is great i love what's happening now so explain to them what's wrong with that instead of giving them <laughs> pandering yeah you don't pander to these people if you're dealing with violent dangerous people why are you going to tell them hey look i like violence and and dangerous and deception too it's just a stupid thing to do <laughs> and people are going to give them money I'm man they're going to they're going to sap away resources. I mean, if somebody gave, uh, you know, somebody's going to donate $4,800 to Rand Paul or $4,800 to the Keen Activist Center or the Brutalist House across the street, mm -hmm. I can tell you who's going to get more out of that money. Absolutely. Those the who are at 100 violence right now, there are people who advocate it, but they're ripe. They are ripe for the reaping to take them down a peg. But you have to donate that money to somebody who's going to advocate a 50. No, I don't have to donate down. that money yeah. to those people. I'm going to give if I'm going to give money to somebody who's running in politics, it's only going to give I'm only going to give money to somebody who's bringing a message to the table that I find valuable. And, and Rand Paul doesn't doing? do that almost never. Which is why all of you should immediately go to christophercantwell.com/donate. There you and go. <laughs> so all you're doing with those people is bringing the small minority that's already at 15 bringing them down to a zero. Great. You brought 15s down to a zero, which is immaterial. 
What we're going after is the mainstream. Oh, I, dis I disagree. Uh, no, you can go after the mainstream, brother. I'm not interested, and I thank you for the call tonight. I appreciate it. I want to find the people who understand the ideas of liberty. I want to bring them here to New Hampshire. I'm done with Washington, D.C. I don't care what goes on in Washington, D.C. I'm under no delusion that I have any effect on Washington, D.C. I'm, I, you know, There's no reason for me to spend money. If I was going to give money, I, I did give money to Ron Paul. And the reason I gave money to Ron Paul was because I. I felt he was bringing at least a principled enough message to the table. You can quibble on some things, sure. But he was bringing a principled and enough message to the table and doing it in a way that was getting people excited, bringing people to the ideas of liberty. There were people have moved, moved to New Hampshire because they found the ideas of freedom through Ron Paul. So that I, you know, I support that. Well, I'm of the opinion, first off, that's communication. I've though. got three different levels of sort of uh, involvement with a politician. I'm willing to vote for them is the lowest level. Mm -hmm. um, the second lowest level is I'm willing sex. to endorse them. I'm not going to have sex with them at any point. Um, I'm willing to endorse them on the air. And my third level is I'm going to give them money. Mm. I'm willing to go level one and perhaps maybe level two with the Rand Paul. Okay. I'm willing did you to give money to Ron Paul? I'm willing to give uh, go to second base. I did give money to, okay. uh, to Ron Paul. I'm willing to go to second base with Rand Paul. Um, because I know that we're going to have a president. In 2016, that means that the, he's going to be in a position of power, and he's going to harm a certain amount of people. There's no president in the Shire Society, brother. Um, no, I'm not having a president. Whatever. There is going to be a president in the United of the United States of America, and I still get a vote for that. And Whoopee. I'm going to be look. It's not the, it's not much, but in the Republican primary <laughs> in New Hampshire, it does mean something. You cannot mm. discount that. Because there's not going to be that many people that go out and vote. So, yeah, I'm going to vote for him because I will vote for the taskmaster that administers three whips as opposed to the taskmaster that administers five. I'm happy to do that. I'm not convinced he's that guy. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and say that I'll probably vote for him in the primary as well. And if he wins the primary, I'd even vote for him for president. But I just don't – I don't want to support, like, go out and be all gung-ho and say, Rand Paul, Rand Paul, and I don't want to send him any money just because it's a misallocation of resources. I think that if we're going, yeah. if we're going to try to, you know, fix this problem, the, the problem gets fixed when, when people understand the nature of the problem. And he's going to do absolutely nothing to help people understand the problem. So if Rand Paul is president instead of – Hillary Clinton, don't get me wrong. I understand that Ron, Rand Paul is going to do a lot less damage policy-wise, but I also don't want Rand Paul to increase uh, belief in the system. I don't want libertarians mm. going more towards like, well, maybe I should compromise with the neocons. I want them to come more towards like, no, I have no compromise on aggression. Totally agree. In fact, I, I think that Rand Paul has some things in common. If it's true that he's this liar and that he's out there just uh, t t trying to sound like he works inside the system and he's really a secret anarchist or whatever, there's a real problem that we have in New Hampshire where certain people who are Free State Project participants are hiding that fact. When they're asked if they're a Free State Project participant and they're running for political office, they're trying to obfuscate that information. And I feel I like that's tell. the same. I think that's the same level of dishonesty and deception. And I'm not interested in supporting people campaigning Here's like that. Be out there in the open. Stand up for what you believe in. Don't be a coward. Okay. Well, I, I I don't think that it's necessarily a, a a negative thing to deny involvement in the FSP Inc. You know, I uh, I have my problems well, with you're the not Free, a Free State, State Project, Project Inc. Well, I'm not any longer, right? And and yeah. that and you know the the in the course of getting uh, expelled from the Free State Project, like sort of uh, made me aware of some things that I don't appreciate about the Free State Project Inc. I'm very the big board fan of, directors, of the Free State yeah. Project movement, but this corporation is sort of like going yeah. through a lot of money and is really shady about what they're doing and not being honest with the the people who are paying them. But the person asking that question and during politics doesn't know about any of that stuff. That's more like internal. They don't even know what the Free State Project is in vast majority of the, the, the time. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. All I'm saying is if, if somebody's being dishonest, they don't have my support. Stand up for what you believe in. Free time. Right my Magic Mud is a tooth whitening powder that removes plaque and detoxifies your mouth. It's safe for your enamel, giving you a beautiful polish and a dentist light clean after every use. My Magic Mud is also the perfect remedy for pain caused by sensitivity. It strengthens your teeth and gums for a strong, healthy smile. The ingredients are 100% natural and it's safe for children. Simply brush with My Magic Mud right before bedtime for a cleaning you can count on. Visit MyMagicMud.com. Do you ever feel like you live in an alternate universe? 
As the stock market hits new highs, the middle class are dying. Manipulated financial markets and economic figures, chaos on our border, China and Russia bypassing the dollar. Life is getting ready to change. You need to prepare to thrive in the new economy. Go to babyboomerbackupplan.com or call 888-507-8789. That's 888-507-8789. Fact. The new NSA data center in Utah requires 1.7 million gallons of water every single day to operate. Billions of Fourth Amendment violations need massive computers and the water to cool them. That water is being supplied by the state of Utah. Fact. There's absolutely nothing in the Constitution which requires your state to help the feds violate your rights. Our message to Utah? Turn it off. No water equals no NSA data center. Visit offnow.org. Ladies, with a U.S. divorce rate near 30% in this job market, looks matter. Breast enhancement or reduction, a tummy tuck or a little lipo can work wonders on you and your confidence. With hospital rates at fractions of U.S. prices and thanks to the recent Thai coup, unheard of low airfare and jaw-dropping deals on luxury hotel rooms. Provide a little info. Get a quote. Hit us up at asianrunlikehellguide.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you can bring up whatever you want by dialing toll-free. The Pro XPN toll-free line is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Protect your privacy online. You need Pro XPN. It's a global virtual private network that encrypts your online data, meaning that before the data leaves your computer, it's encrypted by Pro XPN. So your internet service provider... They are no longer able to know what you're doing online. They're essentially just passing the data, the encrypted data, on to its destination. And right now, if you don't have Pro XPN, then your ISP is probably recording all the websites you visit, all the search terms you enter for, in some cases, as long as five years, making it easy to data mine that or hand it over to a government agency. So ProXPN.com slash FTL is where you can go to download their free software for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. Linux users, you can get Pro XPN 
functioning as well. So setup's just a little bit different. Uh, so again, proxpn.com slash FTL. Now, you can start for free, but you're going to want to upgrade to their premium product, which allows you unlimited bandwidth servers around the world that you can access, as well as the ability to privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. You can do all of that and get it at a heck of a deal. 50% off the price of an annual account with promo code FTL50. That brings the price down to about $5 per month, and FTL50 will work for the lifetime of the account. And so go to uh, proxpn.com slash FTL. Now, there's an even better deal. If 50% off wasn't good enough for you, pay with Bitcoin, and you'll get 62% off of the annual account rate with Bitcoin. The code to use for Bitcoin payers is FTLBTC. So don't get confused. Two codes. If you're not paying with Bitcoin, you can use FTL50 to get you 50% off the annual account. And then also FTLBTC to get you 62% off the annual account when you pay with Bitcoin. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Let's continue here with your calls and thoughts. We've got Caleb on the line. He is in North Carolina and via Skype. Hey, Caleb. How's it going? Welcome. You're on the air. Yeah, I was curious about the Free State Project. I see you're getting close to your 20,000 signatures. I want to see uh, what's going on up there. What does that signature mean? What exactly am I signing? Well, fine question. Uh, so if you go to freestateproject.org, you can learn, obviously, a lot more about the Free State Project. But the statement of intent is that one who loves liberty, presumably, will move to New Hampshire and pledges to, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, I don't have it exactly in front of me, of course. but pledges to uh, work the maximum uh, the possible... Uh, you know, right, to exert the maximum possible effort towards the creation of a society where the... Um, maximum role of government, government so, is the protection of life, liberty, and property, yeah, I the, believe. Yeah, it's, it's maximal, it's like reasonable effort or something like that, so they qualify, it's qualified all over the place. Um, and they want you to move here and do stuff for freedom, right, you know, whatever is right for you. But consider for a second that when the founder of the Free State Project, Jason Sorens, came up with the idea, he really only expected people to sort of move here and vote and maybe campaign and then put a yard sign that says, you know, I support this Liberty Guardian candidate or write a letter to the editor and that kind of thing. And he re-evaluated his number from 20,000 down to 2,000 um, at some point to saying that 2,000 um, activists like the activists we currently have will make the difference I'm looking to make. And I believe that we, since we have 1,600 in the state and we've seen the changes that we've seen already, that we really don't need anybody else to particularly move. However, oh yeah, we do. We need way more people yeah. than we currently have here. I'm think, sorry, Mark. We don't have near enough activists. Well, we've, that's because you want the, the change to come overnight. We're the best. At, that's unrealistic. But uh, we're the. Uh, you know, there's no doubt the Free State Project harbors the best activists in the world, all in one place. But we need more of those best activists because a lot of them are still scattered about all well, across the United States. But um, you know, I think that people will continue to move no matter what happens at this point because they see things happening I agree. in, in uh, New Hampshire. And so. whether they move for the Free State Project or for ShireSociety.com. There's different ways to come to New Hampshire, uh, but the, the general idea is the same. Let's concentrate liberty activists in the same physical area so we can actually have an effect. But but, does that answer your questions, Caleb? A little bit. What if I'm not interested in voting, politics, signs, any of that? I'm just interested in living free. I'm, I'm not particularly Hampshire? interested in voting myself. And I mean, there's a lot of people. I was just out in uh, Grafton recently for the Burning Porcupine Festival, and I mean, they're basically. I mean, there are people who are involved in their local government there and stuff like that. But I mean, these people are just working on creating sustainable lifestyles. They've got farms and stuff like that. And I mean, these are, there are people who come here and just want to like live their lives free of you know yeah. the oppression that they suffered where they once came. I don't know if i consider that to be activism i don't think that that is activism it's, but. it's probably not but i i'm just saying that you know you're not obligated to do basically anything you know by by signing the free state project statement of intent you're not you even can... obligated to move because it's a statement of intent right not exactly. a statement of um, you know like you have to yeah, it's do a contract it's, yeah. it's a momentary binding. declaration now you can live your life into that declaration or you cannot i'm certain that there are people that uh, you know signed it and don't intend to move now, and what are we going to do? Send out uh, Cantwell after him to go get him and drag him back? Yeah, some people do uh, more support kind of things rather than being out in the streets doing activism or running in political campaigns. They might just cook for people, you know, make make dinners for folks and charge them for that. Do kind of underground agorist economy stuff. 
And, you know, there's an argument that that helps support the activists, but that itself is probably not really uh, activism. I think the general definition of activism, from my perspective, is somebody who takes action publicly to try to change uh, society ostensibly for the better. Right. Uh, but, but, you know, if you want to come and find a nice community of people who love the ideas of freedom and just hang out, you know, that's a legitimate reason to move to New Hampshire. And ultimately, having you here is better than not having you here. Um, you know, having an extra person in that community, even if they're not going to do anything of, of an an activist sort is still not a bad thing necessarily and plus you'll probably connect with average folks in new hampshire as well through various different clubs and organizations where you'll be able to at the very least talk to those people the average new hampshireites and or the granite staters and you know maybe help persuade them towards the ideas of liberty which to some extent would be some level of activism so yeah i would say if you if you value the idea of being around other people who care about freedom there is no better place than than New Hampshire. And to be more specific, you know, if you want to get away from it all, that's easy to do in New Hampshire. There's plenty of woods here. But if you want to have a community that's direct, you know, immediate, then, you know, you want well, to move to Manchester or Keene or someplace like that. If you want to live free, I still recommend getting a sailboat and getting mm -hmm. out of, uh, you know, getting out into international waters. Because you're not going to live free in New Hampshire. You're going to have to pay property you're taxes. You're going to live more free, correct? You're going to live more free. Uh, you know, I mean, adult you throw off your seatbelt as soon as you cross the, now. Yeah, you can throw off your seatbelt as soon as you cross the border, uh, which is kind of like a fun symbolic thing to do. And then there are other things that are less noticeable about New Hampshire. Obviously, there's no state uh, personal income tax. There's no state sales tax. A lot of people uh, like to open carry weapons. Open carry is big here uh, in New Hampshire I'm compared to a lot of, of all other these places. things. Now, I've got uh, a 38 Chris on my hip right now. <laughs> What's that? Oh. Say again. I said uh, Chris had some criticisms of the Free State Project Inc. Would he be willing to expand on that? Sure. I, I'll I'll go ahead and say that they're they're not transparent with the with the money that's going through there. I've been told that the the president of the Free State Project is gaining up getting upwards of sixty thousand dollars a year, and we have no idea where that money is coming from or exactly where you know if she's getting upwards of sixty thousand dollars a year. I don't imagine that the rest of the board is doing this you know for free. I imagine that there's a lot of money. Are. Well, there's money going through this place, and I I have no idea where it's being spent, and I don't see it being spent. I don't see the Free State Project buying TV commercials or anything like that so i am questionable about their their finances and their transparency but you don't and, have to give them and, money to and, support and, the idea no right? you don't but if yeah. you but people do give them money right so they i do. i would they discourage want the number reached i discourage <laughs> people from giving the free state project money because i don't think the money is being used well and i'm and i'm afraid that somebody's paying them to fail basically that they're not accomplishing their goals and somebody's paying them anyway which means they're paying them to fail well i i think that the reason people give them money not is, is not because they believe that they use it in an efficient fashion because i have yet to find the political organization organization or you know group or board that uses money in a in yeah, a boards um, suck. in a particularly efficient fashion however what they want to do is they want to do whatever it takes to get that last what is it? Four thousand people. They're getting close to sixteen thousand participants. It's at fifteen thousand nine hundred and thirty-three. We want so to get to twenty thousand. The so. last four thousand people to sign up. Once they do, they trigger the move. The people that are going to move, move. The people that aren't going to move, stay where they are and continue to live in the tyranny that they uh, live in. And at that point, essentially, the board becomes irrelevant. The boards They're are pretty relevant, much irrelevant now. right now. They're pretty close. <laughs> I mean, we've been critics of the board in the past here on Free Talk Live and some of the decisions they've made. But to me, what they do is immaterial. I don't care. You know, I, I like it when people join up because I want to see that number hit 20,000. But, you know, whether or not you join, get to New Hampshire, uh, whether you even join under your real name, they don't know. Yeah. Uh, Definitely so, come here, even yeah. if you don't want to join the... Hey, the, if you join under a fictitious name, do you then have to claim to be a Free State Project member for Ian's uh, truthy test? I don't know. Good question. <laughs> More coming up. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. In a far future universe, Earth's fleet is shattered, rife with guerrilla warfare, interspecies diplomacy, and full-scale interstellar combat. Humanity is about to face its trial by fire. Trial by Fire, book two in the tales of the Terran Republic, sequel to the national best-selling and award-winning Fire with Fire by distinguished professor and author Charles Gannon. Get it now from Amazon through shop.freetalklive.com. If you need to say happy birthday, 
happy anniversary, thank you, or simply I'm thinking of you. ProFlowers.com is the key. ProFlowers has stunning bouquets, like the best-selling 100 blooms for $19.99. Plus, ProFlowers will include a glass vase for free. Sending someone a wonderful surprise of beautiful flowers sent fresh from the field is easy. Choose the bouquet you like, pick the delivery date, and each order is 100% guaranteed. Plus, all bouquets from Pro Flowers are guaranteed to last at least seven full days. Beautiful, fragrant flowers, picked fresh and sent to your loved one for lasting enjoyment. To get this incredible savings and send someone 100 gorgeous blooms with a free vase for $19.99, go to proflowers.com, click the blue microphone in the top right corner, and enter code PLOW. That's proflowers.com. Click the mic and enter code PLOW. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Hi, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Themes Radio Show. The internet has lowered the cost barrier for a worldwide radio show to a price approaching zero. Yet there is one arena where you still need thousands of dollars to approach the audio quality of the corporate media. Doing a live spoken show with more than one host in different geographic locations. Our program, Fiend Phone, will solve that problem and it will be given away free. Go to fiendphone.com to see what you can do to help. That's F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E dot com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want. Whether it's the Free State Project, which I happen to be a fan of the idea of moving people to uh, the same geographic location who love the ideas of freedom in order to achieve the uh, achieve as much semblance of freedom as we can in our lifetime. I think that's a good idea. Of course, uh, ShireSociety.com is another option there where people are declaring their personal independence, and many of them are moving here to the Shire, as some of us like to call it. So let's continue here. Your calls and thoughts are certainly welcome. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Another reason to move to New Hampshire. If you're into Bitcoin... This is one of the hot spots. I'm not going to say it's the hottest of spots, but if you look I at... I think it's, uh, New Hampshire is the hottest, probably the hottest of spots per capita. It could be true. If you look at Overstock.com and their sales numbers as far as where the sales came from when they started accepting Bitcoin, I believe New Hampshire was the number one state for Bitcoin sales to Overstock.com. But more importantly, the Liberty community here, as I was describing earlier, it's unprecedented. There's nothing like this. It's unparalleled around the world. We have more liberty-minded people who might describe themselves as voluntarists, anarcho-capitalists, anarchists, minarchists, whatever. More liberty-minded people all in the same geographic area than anywhere else combined, <laughs> almost, it seems. It's, it's an amazing community. And within that community, there's a high percentage of people who are involved in Bitcoin, who are interested in Bitcoin, who accept Bitcoin, who pay for things in Bitcoin. 
and you can go and get your Bitcoin wallet. Take the first step into getting into Bitcoin. Get the wallet. It's free over at blockchain.com. If you've got a smartphone, or even if you don't have a smartphone, they've got the web wallet too, which you can, you can use at thousands of online uh, locations like uh, Wikipedia. They're now accepting donations in Bitcoin. Dell Computer is now taking Bitcoin right on their website. And also, again, if you've got the smartphone, there are real-life stores that you can go into in different places. Coinmap.org is a great site to go and see where some of those are. But blockchain.com is where you go for step number one. Go grab your free Bitcoin wallet right there. As we go to Jim, he's in Virginia listening uh, in Pittsburgh. Hey, Jim. Greetings, there, free people. Uh, I love the imagery of uh, crossing the border and tossing off your seatbelt and bringing out your gun on your hip and <laughs> maybe taking off your helmet. I don't know what laws they have on yep. that. Yeah, no too. helmet law here uh, in uh, here in New Hampshire. One of the it's not the only state like that, is it? No, or is it? There are a few of them, right? There are a few states where you can have no helmet. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, that's great. But uh, I've, I've got a suggestion for Free State 2.0 or something to do once you achieve your nirvana. This is, we're a ways <laughs> from that, but okay. <laughs> Child Protective Services abolition yeah. or reform. Yeah, I think that there's the intention free. is the the intention is to reform uh, CPS uh, a great deal um, here in in the Free State Project. I think that most well, the Free State Project doesn't have any intention. Most to of do the anything. people that move for the Free State Project have uh, the belief system the Child Protective Services has abused its power in the past. Yeah, we even got a guy Carlos Morales who's a former CPS investigator who's moved up here and he's got all kinds of crazy horrible stories to tell about working for that organization so yeah absolutely i don't see any reason to reform them i'd like to just get rid of them and let communities and people who care actually take care of their their neighbors i'd, I'd go ahead and agree with that but if somebody wants to revoke some amount of power from them in the meantime then, sure. then you yeah. know i could think of worse things for them to do with their time yep absolutely jim what else did you want to share tonight well i, I love talking to you guys because you're the only people more radical than me that i ever talked to so <laughs> oh, good. i just I just think they should be eliminated. You've got to have some mechanism for policing child abuse. Uh, you know, I mean, you can't burn your kid with cigarettes or not feed them or something like that. Well, I mean, that's um, that's you're you're talking about assault at that point. I mean, even you know, even if we're dealing yeah. with traditional police forces and stuff like that, I mean, there's nothing saying that you can't uh, that you can't arrest a person for assault. I mean, if you're if you're hurting people, this is a pretty plain uh plain to see thing that any kind of uh any kind of society would would generally tend to reject i would think unless of course you know unless of course you're wearing a badge at which point when you're allowed to assault yeah people. and i'd rather have uh people come to the aid of that individual because again you have to find out the person was burned with a cigarette right so the, that information has to come out somehow the child has to reveal it to someone or someone yeah. has to notice the burns ask them about it uh, but presuming the information comes out i'd rather have people who actually care on an uh, on a kind of a voluntary basis, taking care of the situation, neighbors who've come together in a, some sort of a mutual aid society to, you know, help rescue children from abusive homes, rather than professional paid bureaucrats who seem like they're more interested in molesting the children put into their uh, care or uh, further abusing them, as we've seen in many foster homes out there, where you know a child will be removed from an ostensibly abusive home and then put into a more abusive home where they may be locked into a cage and fed through a you know a doggy bowl. Or something like that. I mean, or, or worse, beaten severely, uh, starved, etc. So, I mean, there have been some really scary foster home stuff out there, and even stories about CPS workers molesting the kids uh, directly. As yeah, well. not to mention the, the psychotropic drugs and that sort of thing. Yeah. And I mean, if we're if we're going to go all the way to mutual aid, I mean, I'll just go ahead and talk about you know protection agencies in a free society. You imagine insurance companies probably would not want you to be raising violent, dangerous criminals, right? They're going to uh, if you burn your kids with cigarettes. I mean, hurt That's people, bad. hurt people. Yeah. It's and uh, I, I don't imagine that if you're paying for uh, a protection service in a stateless society that, that the protection service is going to be terribly anxious to protect you because you're going to obviously incur some enemies and, and raise a child that's going to be a problem for the rest of the society, and that's going to be extraordinarily difficult to ensure. Yeah, I think it would be interesting to see what the marketplace could come up with to protect kids from abusive parents instead of having some sort of a violent monopoly system that we currently have with the one-size-fits-all. You call the government and then, you know, Hopefully they won't kill the wrong person, you know, because a lot of times uh, people involve the government in their family problems and then they end up with a dead grandson like happened to uh, a grandmother who called the cops on her 
grandson in Florida, and uh, he ended up dead after he was taken to the juvie system. Even when the cops uh, don't kill somebody, they return them over to CPS, where um, you know kids in foster homes are like I think I can't remember what the percentage is, but significantly higher likelihood that they're going to be sexually abused. These are mm-hmm. people taken out of homes for oh, well, the parents are smoking pot or something. You know, I'd rather well, they got have in a, a fight or whatever. I'd rather have a kid in a home with um, you know a pair of alcoholics than in a foster home getting sodomized by another, you know, messed up foster kid. Certainly. And if, you know, if you look at, um, I think Stefan Molyneux is a great guy to listen to if you're talking about children in a free society. He seems to, seems to spend, uh, some people would say, an, inamor- an inordinate amount of time, you know, talking about these things. But it's it's the primary focus of what he does that, you know, the idea is that if we raise a better generation of children, then, then we're not going to have all of these problems. And uh, he, he goes into some great detail on... Uh, uh, at least his vision of a free society and how it deals with child abuse. And, and I gave a very short you know, introduction to that. Jim, Sarah. thanks for your call tonight, man. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live, the only show more radical than Jim. <laughs> All right, let's go to Dave in Poughkeepsie, New York. Dave, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Chris, and Mark. Hey, guys, how you doing? Dave, what's on your mind tonight? I got pulled over by a cop last night. Ooh. How'd yeah, that go? Because, hey, you, guys, you guys were talking about cops last night, and I'm like, last night's show, you guys were talking about cops, and it was in the first hour or so, you guys were talking about cops, so I thought I'd, you know, fill in my little uh, cop story of how I got pulled over by cops, because last night you guys were talking about cops. So yeah, so what happened? Yeah, so, like, <laughs> so what was what did you get pulled over for, Dave? Uh, for, I, I got pulled over because my back rear wheels went over the white line. Allegedly. Six inches over the wa- yeah, six like like you know six inches over the white line. Mm-hmm. Uh, like a, it was like. How a, did he uh, treat you when the cop stuff. came up to your car? How was uh, how did he behave towards you? Uh, he was pretty cool, or whatever, because you know he was looking. At, I'm, I'm a license, or whatever, and, and he said that was, he, he told me to plead not guilty and he did. and check this out, check this out. He said that when I go in, when I when I see him in court, when I when I plead not guilty and I and they, they come back and they, and they mail me the uh, the court date and time, he told me that to remember the conversation. He told me to remember the conversation that me and him had in person that he would let me off so that I don't get I don't get any points on my license. Hold on, I'm confused. All right, yeah, let me... why is your accuser giving you a ticket and then telling? you how best to Telling fight you. the ticket he wants the overtime for coming to court <laughs> yeah is, that's is probably really what it is <laughs> how much, just before we go on He's, dave how much had been you been drinking at this uh, this evening the what how much had you been drinking that evening i don't drink okay yeah, i don't think dave drinks just making it clear it was last He's night high on life it man. was last night it was last night and you know he told me that uh that one that when, when, when we go to court to i would have to remind him of the conversation that yeah. me and him had the other night and that he would right because he can't remember i mean he's doing. pulling people over left and right he won't remember if he wanted uh, to let you go he could have tore the ticket up yeah he could have but as chris is pointing right. out if he goes to what, court what, what he gets paid was, double the cop gets what, paid what overtime what, what, what to sit there was, am i being detained am i free to go i should have said that am i being detained am i free to go you know it I never hurts i oh, wish yeah, they would let i wish they now chris canwell is here uh, from christophercanwell.com tonight now chris uh, you're from new york originally yeah. I, don't, I don't know how close poughkeepsie's somewhat close to the city right like, but, poughkeepsie's a hike from where i lived in stony brook in long island so uh, but but it's hard to get a camera into a courtroom man i know dave is a real prolific videographer he's always posting stuff to was it hudson valley guy 1 i think is the the youtube channel i would love to see you in court dave and uh you going up against this cop i think that would be some of the most entertaining video ever so try to get a camera in there when you go in and thanks for the call let us know how it goes man more coming up here in moments hour number three is on the way 855 450 free you can take control he just keep repeating himself in front of the judge it would be hilarious Hi, everyone. I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, well, they just cover it. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, Look for the green box at your favorite store. 
Lots of things change in life. Here's one thing that has it. For over 20 years, Lumber Liquidators has been the home of unbelievable flooring deals. And right now, those deals are even better. Take your pick of gorgeous pre-finished hardwoods like cherry, oak, and hickory, or an incredible 149 a square foot, plus loads of major hardwood flooring brands at a crazy 40% off. Even get great deals on laminate, bamboo, and vinyl floors. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Special 12-month financing available. But hurry, the sale ends Tuesday. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, August 13th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.88 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,306 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $549. Antiwar.com reports the latest Gaza ceasefire continues to hold and the Cairo-based peace talks seem to still be making good progress, despite Israeli officials warning of significant gaps that remain before a long-term truce can be finalized. The biggest gap may not be in the negotiations themselves, but in the Israeli Security Cabinet, where Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has an uphill battle in trying to convince many to accept peace on any terms. Defense Minister Moshe Yalan, who is seen as on Netanyahu's side in the cabinet, seems to be trying to reassure the hawks that peace isn't imminent, insisting that the Gaza operation could be far from over. The most recent reports suggest the deal in principle already involves expanding Gaza's fishing zone from three miles to six, with Israel promising to expand it to 12 in the future. Israel also promises to ease travel between Gaza and the West Bank and increase the amount of trucks allowed to bring merchandise into the Strip. The big sticking point remains the construction of a UN-managed seaport and or reopening the Gaza International Airport. Israel insists it isn't prepared to discuss either, though this may be just a negotiating tactic. In the spirit of Motorhome Diaries and Liberty on Tour, I intend to take the message of peace, love, and liberty on the road. During the 104-day trip, I'll be visiting at least 10 cities across the country, speaking to people about the ideas of peace, love, and liberty. To find out more about the tour or to donate, visit GoFundMe.com slash FPPCC. That's GoFundMe.com slash FPPCC. The Washington Post reports a federal judge on Tuesday upheld Maryland's ban on assault weapons and large-capacity magazines. The law banning the guns, which was passed in May of 2013, was challenged in court by a group of nine plaintiffs, including gun stores, gun ownership organizations, and individuals. U.S. District Judge Catherine C. Blake wrote, Upon review of all the party's evidence, the court seriously doubts that the banned assault long guns are commonly possessed for lawful purposes, particularly self self-defense at the home, which is the core of the Second Amendment right. She concluded as well that the act substantially serves the government's interest in protecting public safety. The U.S. Supreme Court declared in the landmark Heller case, which struck down the District of Columbia's ban in 2008, that individuals have the right to gun ownership. But, Blake wrote, states have the power to regulate that right. Maryland's law, which was passed five months after the mass shooting in an elementary school in Newtown, Connecticut, made the possession or sale of an assault weapon or a magazine capable of holding more than 10 rounds of ammunition a misdemeanor in Maryland. 
a federal law banning assault weapons expired in 2004. A few other states banned the weapons. Most of the nine plaintiffs who tried to take down the ban declined or did not respond to requests for comment on Tuesday afternoon. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Antiwar.com reports, Ukrainian army officials insisted there is no deal in place for the Russian aid convoy which departed Moscow and that they will block it from entering Ukrainian territory. Ukrainian officials insisted any aid deliveries had to be done through the Red Cross and that the aid would have to be transferred to Red Cross vehicles before entering Ukraine, which despite all the complaining is exactly what Russia already said they were planning to do. The Russian convoy is expected to arrive at the border in two days and will offload its massive cargo of humanitarian aid to the Red Cross. The convoy will then be accompanied by OSCE representatives during the brief trip from the border to Luhansk. The lag between the convoy leaving Moscow and reaching the border will hopefully give the Red Cross more time to sort things out with the Ukrainian military, though at the same time it means Ukraine will likely continue to treat the shipment as some sort of military incursion despite Russia promising not to accompany it with any armed escorts. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. According to locals waiting for a 66 bus in downtown Chicago last night, a young couple was making out in the passenger shelter like they were in f-ing Paris or something. Onlookers spoke to reporters about the pair, who carried on their passionate embrace for over 20 minutes, as if they were in some sort of goddamn candlelit bistro tucked away in Montmartre. It's been almost a half an hour and they're still going at it. It's like they think they're sitting on a sun-dappled picnic blanket in the Tuileries Gardens. I mean, where the hell are we? The Sean Zelizay? The Paris Marathon makeout session, which took place in downtown Chicago and not, as frustrated onlookers emphasized, on a cobblestone street in the city of f-ing lights, featured intense gazing, deep tongue kissing, and other gestures of affection typically reserved for a couple strolling down the banks of the Seine River. You know, for a second there, I honestly thought we had all been transported to Parc Monceau, drinking flutes of champagne on a wonderful summer afternoon while being serenaded by a Parisian accordion player. But no. We're at a bus stop in f-ing Chicago. This is the Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live. Dial toll free and take control of the airwaves at 855 453. That's 855 450 3733. So much to talk about tonight, and how much of it we'll actually get to is another question because we'll take your calls about anything at all with you in our studio tonight. It's Ian here. Christopher Cantwell. And Mark. Chris is here from ChristopherCantwell.com. That's his blog where you can get all manner of controversial opinions <laughs> as well as a uh, podcast. You post the podcast podcast of the blog. The correct? podcast is good. Post to uh, ChristopherCantwell.com. But it's like a video cast them. too, isn't it? Yeah, it's. Uh, I think podcast is maybe a technical term that it I'm is. using incorrectly, but I, I, I do... Um, I, let the link to iTunes and stuff like that break. So, I have to fix that. But it's going out on YouTube every every time we so do it's it. It's primarily right video feed, but you did have an MP3 version. Exactly. And I and I will fix that in okay. relatively short order. Cool. Uh, so check out that. If I you'd keep like, on saying that. but <laughs> If you'd like more of Chris, and we'll, of course, take your calls here at 855-450-FREE. And, you know, I also mentioned there's a study that shows that you have near zero impact on a policy in Washington, D.C., This shouldn't really come as a surprise to anybody, but somebody's done a study about it. Startling new political science study from Breitbart, the source here is Breitbart.com, concludes that corporate interests and (laughs) mega wealthy individuals control U.S. policy to such a degree that, quote, the preferences of the average American appear to have only a minuscule, near zero, statistically non-significant impact upon public policy. That's a lot of qualifying terms for that impact. Minuscule, near zero, and statistically non-significant. That means pretty much nothing. You're right. You're a surf. You're, you're a nobody. subject. And you're, you know, the get out the vote campaign is a joke. Um, yeah. the, the idea that, <laughs> for one, there are like 10 f- swing states. 
So when you think about a presidential election, if you're in 80% of the United States, you can stay home. Mm. Because well, you can be certain that you're not even like you're not even close to uh, you know ha- making a difference at all. Well, whoever you elect, uh, whether you elect them or not, the bankers are going to win. You know, the mega corporations are giving money to both sides. Yeah, that's true. And and devil's advocate here, though, when, when you're in those swing states, I mean, you still have a say in primaries and stuff like that. But the the, the amount of what it amounts to is next to nothing. But anyway. those primaries are pretty much s- solved by South Carolina. I mean, consider for a second that by Super Tuesday, you know, you're it's done. So Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, at that point, you pretty much know who the president's going to be. Well, if they're not in New Hampshire, I don't want them making political decisions anyway. There you go. The startling <laughs> study titled Testing Theories of American Politics, Elites, Interest Groups, and Average Citizens is slated to appear in an upcoming issue of Perspectives on Politics and was authored by university professors. Noted American historian Alan Lichtman, who highlighted the piece in a Tuesday article published in The Hill, calls the research shattering and says their scholarship <laughs> should be a loud wake-up call to the vast majority of Americans who are bypassed by their government. Wake up and do what exactly? What are you going to do differently? Differently. I mean, if you love liberty, you should move to New Hampshire. Uh, that's a real clear plan. But for the rest of everybody, wake up and then what? Vote for the other guy next time around? It, does, does, it doesn't matter if you vote. I what? think it really comes down to leaving. What else can you do? In this country, you have the ability to leave. Of course, you have to pay for it because they have exit taxes and those kind of things. Mm-hmm. Or you have the ability to complain. Other than that, this thing is a, it's a train R- rolling down the, uh, the the tracks towards uh, you know disaster. Uh, they've they're they've spent everything they've got to the point that there's 17 trillion dollars in the hole. It's not going to get any better. You're not going to get the you're not going to wrest the the controls from the engineer. It's over. Yeah, trying to affect the the federal government has a terrible track record of success. All right, so a little bit more here on this story. The people who authored the study said, quote, if policymaking is dominated by powerful business organizations and a small number of affluent Americans, that America's claims to being a democratic society are seriously threatened, say they and the solution they claim is a reinvigorated and engaged electorate. That's right. The reason why the politicians are scumbags and the police state continues to rise is simply because people aren't engaged enough. If only more people voted, that would just change everything. What a ridiculous Pollyanna viewpoint. The the real answer to this problem, Ian, and I'm sick of people not being willing to point it out, is unicorns and fairy dust, okay? (laughs) And if you click your heels three times and say, I wish the other guy was president, (laughs) then, you know, maybe, maybe if you tried this enough times, it might work. Well, they they do claim that they want an engaged electorate. So research the criminals you're going to vote for. That way you'll know which one's less of a criminal. I kind of feel like you would get a better choice than sort of the mediocre uh, candidates that we have. I mean, like, if, huh? if, for instance, if you removed the Republican and the Democrat from the, because um, you got to admit, those are the milk toast, mediocre um, candidates that are out there. And then you had just the third party candidates from which to choose. These are the candidates, by the way, that represent the thoughts and attitudes, by and large, of Americans. No. If you, yeah, if you look, if you look at people's beliefs, and then you rate them towards candidates, towards the political parties, they're not Republicans and Democrats. They're Greens, they're Libertarians, Libertarians by a good stretch, um, and other sorts of independents. These, these are these are largely like radical views. If you, if you start looking at how people actually look at the society, what they view is everything is a compromise. Everything's gray area. Everything's negotiable. And that's why Republicans and Democrats succeed. Beyond the ballot access laws and stuff like that, people don't want these sort of like extreme or radical views. If your views are, you know, far right or far left or, or far libertarian or far communist or whatever, then people are generally going to be turned off to that, which is why your Republicans and Democrats are so milquetoast, because People Mm. take a basket of issues and they're just like, hmm, I I think that everything is negotiable and this is the negotiation that I would sort of prefer. But if the other guy wins, then that's going to be fine, too. I wouldn't disagree with that statement that they they want to negotiate and that sort of thing. But if you look at a person's opinions and you match them towards a political party, they're not the Republicans and Democrats really they don't dominate the way they do is in, in the election. The reason people vote in the presidential elections for Republicans and Democrats is because they believe they can win, which is an incredibly stupid reason to vote. You have one vote 
and it doesn't matter who you give that vote to, you're not making a difference whether, as to whether that candidate can win or not. You might as well give your vote to the party that you that represents you, right? Like if you're a green, you might as well vote for the green candidate because the, the, the when was the last time a Democrat won by one vote? Well, I'll tell you what, in the uh, in the election in Suffolk County where I ran for Congress, the, the Democratic candidate won by like a, a hundred and something votes. Yeah, that's and I not spent, too much. And that... I spent most of my time attacking the, the Republican candidate in that case. So so hmm. there's some, I didn't make the ballot, but I do know a number of people who wrote me in and there's some suspicion that I may have costed that Republican the election. So, I mean, if you're, if you're a person who actually wants to effect political change, if you want people to run for office, I mean, there's, there's an argument to be made for voting. Republican or Democrat. I don't personally think it's terribly useful. There's most an of argument the time. to be made if you want to have if you want to have some kind of impact on politics that if you love liberty, you should move to New Hampshire because the I think that's Washington the best DC, solution. It, Washington DC, you might as well just throw your money down a hole. Just go ahead, just set it on fire. If you're gonna give money to campaigns for uh, people running in DC, you just might as well torch the cash. But at least here in New Hampshire, you can actually get elected. Freedom oriented people who would best be described as voluntarists, anarcho-capitalists, uh, are being elected here in New Hampshire as both Republicans and Democrats. That's already happened, and it's happened dozens of times over the last several years. You can talk to the state representatives here in New Hampshire. These people are accessible. When you go to the website and you pull up contact information for these people, it's their home phone number or their cell phone number almost every single time. It's not uncommon in New Hampshire if you're going to call, if I want to call a state rep and say, hey, I want you to vote uh, in favor of marijuana legalization, there's a good chance their kid's going to pick up the phone or the wife <laughs> or whoever. And uh, I'll, put, I'll go get my daddy and you know, put the phone down. That's how It's not that's usually how daddy. It's usually grumpa um, because or grumpa. It depends. Um, but anyway, anyway, my point being, these people are accessible. They don't have some sort of intermediary. They don't have the the aides and the staff to block you from uh, from reaching them. They don't even have an office they can go and sit in. They've nope. got a locker at the uh, the state house <laughs> and a mailbox. That's it. And they get a hundred bucks a year for the for the effort plus a small travel stipend. And that's it. So that changes the game in a big way as far as being able to actually talk to these people, persuade them. Right. Uh, it's not it's a lawyer industrial here. complex in Concord in, the way it is in 49 other states in right. Washington, D.C. So if you're looking for political success, look no further than New Hampshire. But we'll come back with more and you can share your thoughts on Free Talk Live. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237.
I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Which order you going to display? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't gonna make. Wait a minute. Now. Wait a minute. Oh, wait, the road. Yeah. Whoa. Hey! Oh my God! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared of me. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 357 if you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up anything you want. Here, toll free, 855 450 free. If we get a chance, we'll get to the 10 things that sucked about growing up a Jehovah's Witness. Uh, an elderly, elderly lady raided by police. We'll tell you what that was all about. And of course, you can take control of the airwaves here at 855 450 free. Mark, you are a huge coffee fan, and you found some really great coffee. Yeah, I just got my shipment of BuzzBox coffee in the mail yesterday. Well, I get the decaf, um, and it mm. is, uh, I believe it's a Colombian. There's not a lot of uh, choices in decaf. It's you regular coffee drinkers yeah. that get all the choices, Sumatra and all the varieties out there. As a matter of fact, if you want good-tasting coffee, the best thing to do is get ones that are from specific regions rather than sort of blended, because then you can have the different experiences of the different coffees mm. grown in the different soil. But um, And BuzzBox, of course, will educate you on coffee. But I think, for me, what the greatest part of it is, is I just ran out of coffee. Literally. I scooped my last uh, pot of coffee out yesterday. Mm. And Were you I, nervous? I was. Um, and <laughs> my shipment showed up today. Perfect. And... I, you know, it shows up. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to go to the store. I, I probably should plan just a little bit more um, in, but maybe maybe I drank a little more. I don't know. Well, you can sh you can adjust the the frequency of the shipping. You right? can adjust the frequency of the shipping. You can adjust you know? the amount that you get okay. shipped. Um, and I think it's awesome, Buzzbox Coffee. It's 100% uh, organic. Wait a minute, you get a free pound, right? If you pay you, the shipping cost. Yep, uh, that's indeed the the case. If you go to coffee.freetalklive.com, you can get a free pound of the coffee. First pound's free. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're gonna love it. And you probably, if you're if you're going and uh, you know going to the website and getting the free pound, you likely drink coffee already. I'm not mm -hmm. hooking anyone right. new, hopefully here. <laughs> but it's top one percent grade arabica beans. It's shade grown, which can help with people who have sort of the uh, uh, acid reflux because of coffee. Shade grown is much more mild. And Buzzbox is, of course, competitively priced with other high end coffees. It's a subscription. Once you sign up there. You can cancel at any time, but if you continue to get your coffee through there, then um, you know Free Talk Live gets credit for it. Every ten people who sign up, we're able to offer another micro loan to another family around the world who needs help. Now, I don't know how they need help. They do. They can. They ask for the micro loan for the reason that they ask for it, whether it's a plow or restaurant equipment or whatever it is. And you can help them get a hand up rather than a hand out. It's coffee.freetalklive.com for your free pound. 
All right, let's go back to your phone calls and thoughts. Uh, the real James Witt is on the line calling from Fountain Hills, Arizona. James, you're on Free Talk Live on the Amp Lines. Yes, Mark. Um, I just wanted to apologize to you. I've been really mean to you, and uh, it's just uh, I've – well, today's my birthday, so I had to kind of, you know, have a come-to-Jesus moment and make a few changes. So I just wanted to say that I'm sorry. Your, your apology is set. Thank you so much, James. <laughs> it, it's Aww, just, you know, I'm going to so go sweet. out drinking tonight, but, you know, I, I'm i a little afraid, too, because last year on Christmas time, I got arrested. So, you know, I'm just kind of hoping that uh, I can, you know, sit down, have a few drinks, and uh, work on my kind of, I'm going to become a Muslim, I think. I'm going to be a born-again Muslim. <laughs> well, alcohol, uh, Muslims don't like alcohol, and alcohol has never solved anything. Well, but, he could still drink. has milk, so go ahead. He could still have a drink before he becomes a Muslim, and he'd be in the clear, right? I, I guess. Well... Or you could, or you could become a Muslim. You could, you could become a Muslim, continue to drink, and then you'd just be another hypocrite religious fanatic like most of them. <laughs> Wait a minute, wasn't Davi Barker uh, telling us when we were in California, Mark, and we were being driven, uh, driven about from place to place? Wasn't Davi telling us that there's some Muslims who are advocating for the use of alcohol or for the? I'm use sure there are states? somewhere, but I don't know the answer. I don't recall the details on that. Hey, James, happy birthday, man, and uh, and well, thanks. Hmm? I think if I take my neighbor out, uh, Sheriff Joe, he's my neighbor. I can wake up and watch him shave every morning. And uh, I think if I go out with him, he he can just badge us out of a ticket or, you know, that way I won't Sheriff get Joe. thrown in jail again. Sheriff yeah, Joe, that's yeah. what I'm hoping. But the one thing is I, I just... I just obsess over the Jacks. We just need to finish nuking them. I just can't stand them. <laughs> Thanks for the call tonight, James. Okay. Appreciate it. Toll-free number 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. So let's go to Nathan. He's in Texas. You're on Free Talk Live via Skype. Actually, uh, they drink a lot in Iran. I don't know if you knew that. No. Huh. Okay. So it's is that from some of their policies, you'd think there'd have to be an open bar somewhere. Is that the Shiites that are <laughs> able to do that, or uh, that's correct? They're third in uh, hmm. in per capita alcohol consumption behind Lebanon and Turkey among Muslim speaking countries. Interesting. All right. I'm not sure Muslim is a language, but sorry. <laughs> keep going for it. <laughs> nice one, Campbell. All right. Well. You brought up this issue of uh, childhood experiences earlier, Chris, and I've been meaning to call in about the ACE study, which is something that Stefan Molyneux talks about in his video, The Bomb in the Brain. And this is essentially a study that was done where they give kids this questionnaire, and it's a real short questionnaire. It's not some like 30-page form you have to fill out or anything. It's just a short 10-page questionnaire, 10-question question questionnaire, and it asks, uh, it asks if you've experienced emotional, physical, or sexual abuse uh, emotional or physical neglect, or any kind of parental divorce, violence, drug abuse, mental illness, or incarceration. And they're just yes or no questions. And then the number of yes answers is added up for the total score. Well, I, it sounds to me that if you're going to uh, equate emotional neglect with physical abuse and neglect and stuff like that, this is, seems, I, I imagine the numbers on this survey were extraordinarily high. Yeah, I mean, if you're asking kids, and, and those statements are, have I ever experienced emotional neglect yeah well, that's 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 I had eat dessert before. last night that hurt my feelings <laughs> yeah so that's that's some of the things like and 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 this is one of the things with stefan that like i get a little like annoyed with because he'll, he'll use things like that and use these like outstanding you know numbers to uh, you know illustrate a problem but i i do think that uh you know obviously child abuse and neglect is a serious problem that could probably if negated negate a lot of other problems well, one of the well, problems actually, I have is with the study that says that uh, spanking causes uh, lower IQs. Have you seen this? This one's uh, one that he has cited in the past, too. Yeah, and, I have heard of that one. And I find this one extraordinarily frustrating because, you know, how do you say which parents have what IQs? I mean, maybe people who are more likely to have low IQ children are more likely to spank. Right. And that that's, you know, some very important causative data that might mm -hmm. not be included in this. And, you know, obviously... Obviously, the striking of a child on their bum isn't what makes them have lower IQs. It's the terror that somebody who feels separated from the people who love and provide for them might feel, and that could be caused by something besides spanking. So I really find this whole um, conversation around spanking to be barking up the wrong tree in many ways. I think I think what he says, though, about
about spanking, and I'll try to get back to the caller's original point. I, I, but but the thing the thing about that is that what he says is that you know you're developing the the flight or fight instinct you know at a, at a very young age, yeah. and and what happens is when you're when you're spanking your children, you know they have no option to flight, right? You're you're grabbing them, you're putting them over your knee, and a lot of times you're pulling down their pants. If and they leave, them. the cops are going to bring them back. Well, exactly. So they're learning that there's no escape from violence, which which teaches them, uh, as I was taught when I was a kid and I got spanked, mm. that you have to fight, right? And the reason that you're getting spanked is because you have no option to to fight off the attacker, right? That there is no option to uh, to escape the situation and that you can't fight back because you're too small. And then when you get uh, uh, big enough to fight back, then you're going to lose that, that second of hesitation that most of us have before we haul off and hit somebody in a threatening situation. Hey, Nathan, thanks for the call tonight, man. I appreciate it. Toll-free number here, 855-450-FREE. There's plenty of time for your call with your thoughts on whatever's on your mind. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Next to water and food, you need a safe, storable fuel supply for your preparedness needs. Spare fuel is the answer. Spare fuel can be used in any gas-powered vehicle or generator. Spare fuel is perfect for any unforeseen out-of-gas emergencies. Unlike gasoline, spare fuel is safe to store with your other supplies, and it can be stored for many years. Go to GetSpareFuel.com for special pricing. That's GetSpareFuel.com. Negotiation isn't just something union leaders and sports agents do. Your entire day is a series of negotiations. If you have young children, you know that. In fact, your kids can teach you a lot about negotiating with grown-ups. According to the world's greatest negotiator, Herb Cohen, author of You Can Negotiate Anything. Herb says that kids understand the process of decision-making within an organization organization. When one parent says no, they'll ask the other. And Cohen says children persist and persevere. And like smart negotiators of all ages, kids know that no is an opening bargaining position. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important, especially if you're a job seeker. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. The town wants him to stop, so he's charged with a misdemeanor and could spend six months in jail. 71 years old. Nice folks blind. there. He's Wouldn't let blind. That's his source of blind living. Blind old man sells some firewood out of his front yard. Nice. So now you're looking at having to go out, get a firewood permit, which is going to cost you X amount of dollars a year, and who knows how much research to try and yep. you know figure out how to get the permit. Just then doing whatever go, they can to stop industry. Yeah, then you have to go and get uh, get your education so you can actually run the saw, and then you have to get a variance on your property so you can actually sell the firewood from your property. Oh, and don't forget, if you have a storefront, then you have to pay, what, five, six, $700 a month in rent, maybe $4,000 a month in rent, depending on what city you have an occupational in. license, too. Aggression like this by these government people have 
happens all across the country, and you have to ask, how much more are you willing to put up with before you finally say no? Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you're invited to bring up anything you want right here. Toll free at 855-450. We've got some uh, more cops acting really poorly, especially towards a, uh, a lady in her 60s or late 60s, a grandmother. We'll uh, share some of that information. There's video of them raiding her house, and we'll tell you what that was all about. Plus, the 10 things that sucked about growing up as a Jehovah's Witness, uh, kind of a look inside the religion as to what things are like in there. We'll share that with you if we get the chance. Your calls, of course, come first. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, and that toll-free number is brought to you by ProXPN. You know, day hikers, the ones that are most likely to get caught in situations where they need survival training. If you go out and do some hiking, it might be a good idea to embark on the adventure of a survival training course. You can go to Survival Training School of California, and they're among the best survival training schools in the world, arguably the best. Uh, they're, um, they've been they've been endorsed by the United States Marine Corps Mount, Mount, Mountain Warfare Training Center Survival Instructors Group, the U.S. Navy Research and Rescue Group, the U.S. Air Force and uh, Stanford University, Joshua Tree National Park, um, world's largest women's outdoor organization, the California Department of Justice. It just goes on and on the list and list and list of the uh, the groups that have uh, endorsed the Survival Training School of California, and for good reason. Thomas Coyne, their lead instructor, is highly qualified. They can give among the um, the best advice you can get out there. They've got Training courses of all sorts coming up right now. If you go to CaliforniaSurvivalTraining.com, you can take a look, including a pocket knife only course that's coming up. CaliforniaSurvivalTraining.com. Embark on an adventure. Do something different with your vacation time. People come from around the world. People come from you know, up to 3,000 miles just for a weekend course. CaliforniaSurvivalTraining.com. You know, here on Free Talk Live, we don't have too many rules about calling the show. Generally, when you call in, you're asked very, very basic screening questions. A lot of talk shows, they are very invasive, and they really want a lot of detail from a caller that's calling in. We want name, location, what you want to talk about. How you're listening is useful for us, because we like to know if you're listening to a radio station or online. It's like a polling question. Yeah, So, um, but usually one of the rules we have is that one call per night. Now, in this case, I think that the last guy was not actually, in point of fact, James from Arizona. He claimed to be the real James Witt, uh, but I don't think that he was because he was actually calling on the amp lines. And as as far as I know, James in Arizona, you are not actually the the actual James in Arizona who is now on the line with us. Uh, You are not a Free Talk Live amplifier, so that was kind of the uh, the dead giveaway there. But uh, what's on your mind tonight? As I remember, you said you had Dave and mine's number because you have caller ID in another episode of Free Talk Live. I do not. So I do not have your. Uh, I don't okay, have caller ID. Uh, it's uh, it's Derek. I'm not misquoting you. Derek, who I'm has the caller ID. I'm not misquoting you. Derek I, has I know the caller I'm not ID. Misquoting you. Okay. you once put me online with Dave at the same time, and you mentioned you had both of our numbers, and maybe you could put us in touch that, with each other. That's not because I have caller ID, me, though. If you want, to, if you listen to what I'm saying, yes, right. James. I got your number okay. from Derek J. Freeman, who has the caller ID. And Dave in N- Dave in New Those York has openly things. posted his phone number on his Facebook profile. I don't care anymore inviting to speak people about to call. Dave in New York. But what does disturb me is uh, the only the reason why the very first time I called into Free Talk Live Ian is because the dilemma about war is that it causes some terrible evils, and the dilemma about uh, pacifism is it allows terrible e- evils to exist, and that is what our uh, main dispute is about. And I don't respect your view any more than you respect mine. I think being pacifist 
is immoral and wrong. But I don't want to talk about that. I'm not but necessarily a pacifist. To... If you called in, why do you not want to talk about it? You just talked about it, so I'd like to address that. And I know Kim yeah, yeah, feels strongly I'll, here. I'll, I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead. Japan um, was a quote. Was Japan again. Was awful thing to have to <laughs> James, do. James, this is a, this is a talk hey, show. Chris, so like, we, we, about... we have a we have microphones, and sometimes we're going to participate in what you uh -huh. say on the show, right? So I'm going right, to go ahead Chris, and co-sign. I didn't call to talk to you. I'm going right, well, to I'm going to co-sign what you said that that pacifism allows terrible evil. I'm I'm agreeing with you, and now I'd like you to continue. I'm the and, only Quaker, your... real Quaker in this group, and I'm going to agree with the statement that pacifism allows terrible evils. I'm not a pacifist, uh, so anyway, go I on. I want to speak to one of the uh, one of the more than one bits that my calls have inspired other callers to call in. As the the previous caller made something some very disturbing things that I should like to address. In the context of saying, responding, uh, Mark, you were sitting there in that studio with Stephanie, Stephanie once, who once asked me why I don't respond on Facebook when she knew I didn't respond on Facebook because she looks at the Facebook page that she, in the same context, denied ever looking at. Wait, but I'm really confused was, by that statement. Let me, uh, let me continue. The point is— No, I, I'd like to understand what you're saying, actually. So with the Facebook statement, are you saying that you were talk, trying to talk to Stephanie on Facebook or the vice versa? What happened there? I told her the reason why I didn't is because if I give my full name, I know there's trolls out there that go on the Internet and they look up the person that they don't like and they troll them on the Internet. And they, gotcha. they Google the name and they search everything about their person that they can find. They're doxing. called freaks. They're That's called, called they're, those are actually trolls. They're scumbags, like the person that just called in that you have their number. I should like to know who the F they are. Um, and I don't have their number. How dare they okay. freaking look up? How so, dare they look up my name on the internet and go make jokes about where I live? And yes, it is my birthday. And I didn't happen to well, happy birthday. Would never have mentioned that. I don't take that as being sincere from you because I don't well, take I'd you like to, to be point a sincere out, minister. Okay. I think you're – Before you okay, – all the rambling. Listen, yeah, we Mark, do not rambling, have Mark. the a Mark, caller ID here. calling your show and is Googling me on their – Computer that's how the internet fun. works, pal. <laughs> look, that's what it's you like. think we're, we're public personas here. Like people look us up and put all I kinds of information been, about I us out there. You made a pro up. you made a choice to be a regular caller into this program and basically make yourself a feature, right? Like this is to the point right. that our listeners are that interested in you that they're gonna go look you up on the internet and post your mug shots, right? Because you wanted to be a part of the show. You want to be a part of the public program, program and people shot. come and look you up and they find out who you are. And if you're ashamed of who you are, then I don't know what to tell you. Posting my muck shots. You've been looking me up, Chris Current. Well, are you one of those freaks that goes trolling on the internet about people just calling in to free talk live to shoot the Shiite about issues that I care about and politics and war and freedom and liberty? Huh? Well, if you've been locked up a few times and you think it's a good idea to go kill a bunch of people in a foreign country, it might Shiites be a relevant position. Driver, dude, and you went to prison for it, didn't you? Yeah, I went to I jail. Not prison. I went to jail for drinking and driving, too. So I feel for you there. Don't get me wrong. But it sounds like you, you know, some of the things that you come up with, man, it sounds like you've been, you know, still drinking. You know, it sounds like you might be, uh, you know, at an open bar and then trying to come up with political policies that you want politicians to follow that get millions of people killed. He's never slurred. Hey, how much PBR do you have in your fridge right now chris i think i've got drinking, i've got a couple of two uh to talk or free talk don't ask a question if you don't want an answer talking. no i've got i've got pbr in my fridge right now i got a couple of 16 ounce pbrs and then i actually had a gentleman who was over looking at one of my rooms for rent and he, he bought me a bottle of the um is it the the jim beam the devil's cut the 90 proof whiskey that 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 really gave me a couple of rough mornings so i have alcohol <laughs> in the house and i'm not i'm not playing any holier than thou crap with you pal i'm not trying to do that to you i'm just saying that some of the things you call into a radio program, you act like this. You don't know how this works. We're the guys with the microphones. You know, we're we're, we're compensated to do this. There's a reason that we're on here because people are think you're interested in what we have to say, and then we're kind enough to like be like, hey, let's hear from you too, and then you just talk over us. You know, one of the things that you you're said, you're tonight, kind, Chris. One thing I can, I think everybody can agree with is, is you're a triple A. A alcoholic atheist a hole. That's what you are. It actually stands for anarchist atheist fiber. expletive. But you, you, but I think you've gotten the alcohol thing under control these days. It seems like atheist a hole. That's what you are, down to your very fiber, Chris. I'll go ahead and I'll and go ahead and co-sign the alcoholic thing. All right. Hey, uh, thanks for the call tonight, uh, James, and happy birthday. Uh, you know, thanks for spending it with Don't us. Don't tell me happy birthday.
birthday. You should go to jail for tax fraud because that's what your your New Hampshire thing is. Thanks for the call. Oh, so angry. Yeah. All right. Toll free number 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3000. If I had any doubts that that might be true. Right. I mean, there, there was posts, uh, you know, we, we didn't know for sure, but now we know for sure it's it's James's birthday. <laughs> and a happy one, I hope. All right. So Doesn't sound like it, though. No. <laughs> nope. All right. Well, there's more coming up. Talk uh, about taking the bait. Enough time. <laughs> <for> <laughs> <taking a rain. laughs> there's more coming up. Lots of things change in life. Here's one thing that has it. For over 20 years, Lumber Liquidators has been the home of unbelievable flooring deals. And right now, those deals are even better. Take your pick of gorgeous pre-finished hardwoods like cherry, oak, and hickory, or an incredible 149 a square foot, plus loads of major hardwood flooring brands at a crazy 40% off. Even get great deals on laminate, bamboo, and vinyl floors. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Special 12-month financing available. But hurry, the sale ends Tuesday. Hi, Chuck Woolery here. I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn, isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee. You can use the whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt you'll send it back. This stuff really works. Australian Dream is now available at Target or your favorite retail store. It's the heart of summer across America. Thoughts turn to childhood and long days of fun. Everybody would love to feel like a kid again. And HB Extract can be a vital tool in your battle to stay vibrant and young as it supports healthy blood pressure and circulation while balancing cholesterol. GCN and longtime sponsor HB Extract want to help keep your heart healthy with the 30 Bottles 30 Days Summer Giveaway. Enter to win by visiting GCNlive.com between now and August 29th and click on the contest banner in the top left corner of the page. HB Extract has helped tens of thousands of people worldwide feel good again. And they've done it with HB Extract's exclusive formula of wild crafted and organic herbs. Here's to you enjoying many more long, warm, and fun-filled summers free of pain and sickness. Visit GCNlive.com and enter to win in the 30 Bottle 30 Days Summer Giveaway with HB Extract. A healthy heart is a happy heart. Sign up now at GCNlive.com. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a mm. license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration of the Department of Health, Education, and Wealth. Fair and of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come you to see, think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM.
Free Talk Live. Take control toll free here, 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. You can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features waiting for you there. Lots of cool stuff uh, is on freetalklive.com, but if you like what we're doing, you like the fact that the website's free, unlike those other talk show hosts who charge you for the same features that we give away. You know, we've got archives, live streams, we've got the cam, uh, all kinds of stuff, different ways to interact with other listeners. If you like what we're doing here on Free Talk Live, one of the ways to help us out is by shopping with us. Go to shop.freetalklive.com and enter Amazon through the links you'll find there. There's Amazon UK, Amazon Canada, and Amazon US. You just go into whichever one's appropriate for you, get your shopping taken care of, and Free Talk Live gets a cut of the sale. So it's the same great Amazon experience you're used to. It's just that we get a cut of their profits when you enter through shop.freetalklive.com. Let's continue with your calls and thoughts. Anthony, listening in West Virginia to WVTS. Hey, Anthony. Hey, man. What's, hey, up? what's on your mind tonight? Oh, uh, immigration. Okay, what about it? Uh, I don't, I don't know, man. Uh, I think we need to. Send them all back to Mexico. You don't really mean that, do you? Yeah. Uh, you sure you're not trolling everybody, us? <laughs> you s- everybody, uh, dude, I know the subject's been like wore out, but I mean, it's still a problem. Do you realize what you're asking for? I mean, when you're saying you want people to be deported, and you said to Mexico, so I, I, I presume you're okay with leaving the Chinese and the, the Irish and other folks here. <laughs> Yeah, I helped a Belgian get an illegally uh, an illegal job um, here in the United States. Just to be clear, you only right. want to deport people from Mexico? Oh no, no. But I mean, the Mexican government is like really pushing us. I mean, heard, I've never uh, felt pushed by dude, the Mexican uh, government, but I've never lived it? there. Um, look, I uh, uh, the other would, thing do, it, it, it would seem to me. It, look, it, it, the the funny thing I find about this immigration debate is is you'll usually hear it from people who would claim to be pretty fiscally conservative, yet they think it's like a good idea to like round up some you know like thirteen million people. I I think is the number. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It, it, people who are in this country illegally, and they think it's a good idea to like round them all up and give them a ride home. And it just it seems like a lot of money to spend. And then if you want to prevent this from happening in the future. Then you're talking about closing down borders. You're talking about military. You're talking right. about fences. You're talking about closing off not the entrances, fellas, right. but the yeah. exits. You're talking about closing off the exits. So when your government clamps down, it's a lot harder for you to get out as well. Well, wait These a minute. People- Can't, well, you've got to find them, too. So not only do you have to do all the closing down and the clampdowns, but you also need to, you need to do house-to-house searches. You need to raid businesses, check IDs, stop and frisk on the, uh, on the streets. There needs to be total police state in order to do what our caller is talking d- d- about. Depending on on what kind okay. of effort okay. you want to put into finding them, but oh, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, but, but, the, but the thing... Okay, go ahead. That's kind of really the whole point of uh, fixing this, because, I mean, if you're talking about a police state, you're talking about martial law. And I'm talking about what's happening right now. I don't have to wait for martial law to talk these, about a police state. Right. All, the, all this crime and stuff is eventually going to lead to, I mean, just all out I don't know. It's, it's but the, the, the t- crime are you, is, are you implying that illegal immigration is responsible for a great portion of of the crime in America? Because I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure most of the people in prison right now are American citizens, right? So I mean, that would tend to imply that there's not uh, that the the correlation between immigration yeah. and crime is not necessarily. I don't think there's any higher level of criminality among immigrants than anybody else in the United States. If you compare you know, males, eight, 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 if you if you compare, uh, hold on, if you compare, right if you up. compare males, eighteen to thirty four, this was done by the American Conservative Magazine. If you can... Hey, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. Uh, the prison population in America is, by percentage, the largest population of prisoners in the world. Yeah, yeah by a good capita, stretch. And yes. it's mostly Americans. Okay, I mean, we, we've got problems, okay? We don't need a lot of immigrate illegals coming in. I mean, we're trying to fix our economy. And that's just that's so we have an economic support. problem. You're it, claiming that we have an economic problem, not an immigration problem. And I would agree with you. We have a welfare well, problem I in this mean, country. It's, it's if you put out a hand, bowl, I mean, gotta, hold on, wait a second. If you put out a bowl of cat food every day in the morning, and then you get ang- that you get angry and jump up and down because cats come to your um, house for free food, you're a fool. Exactly. And that's the problem. Exactly. Is there's a bunch of free stuff being uh, given out to immigrants, and so you get the you get the the ones that want to a uh, bunch of free stuff. Who wants them? 
And all these all these Republicans are sitting by, and they're not really doing anything to stop this. Of course they're not. I mean, because here's here, and, and I'll tell you, and I'll tell you exactly why. And this is why Rand Paul is a terrible idea too. I mean, because they, what happens what happens is look, look, this, is a, this, is a, this is a radio show, right? So like we have microphones, yeah. and people yeah. like are listening because they want to hear us talk. So the the idea, yeah. the, the, what I'm trying to get at here is that this is why Rand Paul was a bad idea. Because what he will do is he will get by nothing that cuts the government. What he will get through, or what the next Republican president or whoever will get through is exactly the kind of immigration stuff that the caller is talking about, right? They will get through the thing that expands the power of the state instead of repealing powers of the state. And the, the idea, if you're concerned about freedom, it would be to, you know, the way you deal with the immigration problem is to stop giving free food to people who are poor. And that would prevent people from wanting to come over if they had nothing to offer to the society. And then the people who did come over would be people who wanted to be productive and help and and in increase the economy. When you give people free stuff, then they come over and they live off of free stuff. And that's obviously a problem not only with immigrants, but a much larger problem with just plain lazy well, Americans. Go ahead, Anthony. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't really think that uh welfare is I mean somebody's gotta be poor. I mean, sure, I mean people could work more, but I mean somebody's gotta be poor. Somebody's gotta be the guy at the bottom, you know what I mean? Why I mean, does somebody have to be poor? I understand somebody might have to be at the bottom of the food chain or whatever, but I mean, why does that mean that the people at the bottom have to be in poverty? Well, I mean, middle class citizens make a hundred thousand a year. I think that uh, the news and stuff. I mean, they kind of play that up like everybody that is under so much money is middle class. No, we're not all middle class. I think in New Hampshire, you have $100,000 a year. You'd be pretty upper class, yeah. Hey, uh, Anthony, you know, I I have some real concerns with where you're coming from here tonight, and I wish we had more time to discuss it. This is a big issue, and it's just not appropriate to try to address it in a significant manner in the remaining moments of the show. But I want to thank you for calling tonight, and feel free to call again because, you know, I really want to focus on the idea that— Okay, we've already pointed out welfare is a problem. Fine, we're on the same page. It sounded like he agreed with that. But, of course, there are a lot of people who will say, well, you know, between now and when we can get rid of welfare, we need to crack down. We need people on the borders. We need to have uh, Marines. But that's a conversation I'm willing to have um, is is that, you know, yes, we, we need more freedom in our lives, but it's important how we unwrap this freedom package. And I think that it is. Uh, now, I would like to talk about sort of the statistics behind that. Um, what's the, cause I mean, cause from what I can tell immigration, you know, people moving here for a better life, no matter what they do, bring a net positive to this country. From what I can tell everything I've read on the subject, because you can believe me, if I thought that they were getting too much, you know, getting more money than they were taking, uh, taking more money than they were giving, um, if they were, uh, you know, causing more crime than they were, uh, you know, is making in the economy or anything like that. I'd be against it. Yeah, but never from been what my I can experience tell, with immigrants. There's a net positive, even with the welfare issues that we currently have, because that's mostly what they're vilified for. You know, um, Juan comes here, here makes uh, eight bucks under the table and keeps it all, whereas John makes fifteen dollars above the table and he's in debt. So, I mean, I've mm-hmm. seen this email, and yeah, no, I've have, I have some real problems with the way the math is done. So we've got a situation where people are very upset. In fact, the, the polling numbers, um, I was looking at some of them earlier tonight. We didn't talk about it on the air, but one of the polls we were talking about had some questions about immigration and you know the, the amount of people who are just blaming immigrants for all of the, the problems in the country. These people have been made into a scapegoat and they've been made into a political football. And these are people's lives we're talking about here. And I don't know why it is more people in America, the supposed land of the free, can't find some empathy and some compassion for people who are trying to escape an undesirable situation and come to a place that they believe is more desirable. You know, maybe they're wrong, maybe they're right. There's certainly plenty of problems with the United States that a lot of people around the world don't hear about. We had a guy from uh, Cameroon, Africa on the phone with us, and he was saying that before he started listening to Free Talk Live and LRN.FM's content, they thought that the United States was this land of the golden opportunity where everything's just great and freedom and everything. And then, you know, we talk about the police state and all the bad things that are happening here, and he's come to realize that really the difference is only in degrees. And so I'm, you're not going to 
solve the problem, whatever problems immigration has with violence and force uh, of the state and a, and a police state, it's only going to make things worse for you in the long run. Even if it does stop immigrants from coming here, it'll be because it's a living hell and they won't want to leave wherever it is they're leaving anymore. Yeah, the, the immigration thing drives me crazy with the conservatives. I started off in politics with the Tea Party and stuff like that. And it was the one thing, one of the few things that like I just could not jive with them on. It's They get so angry and they blame everything on this group of people who right. have really no impact on their lives and they just get so furious about it it's irrational right. they want small government on one hand but on the other hand they want a total police state to stop immigrants yeah. what, I mean, you know take your pick we'll see you tomorrow night freetalklive.com christophercantwell.com later this alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Many Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for 129000 You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. Call 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Lil Drums. Every bit as fun as a full-size Nestle drumstick cone and definitely cuter. Visit us at drumstick.com. Vacations are all about family time, but you don't have to leave home to have fun. Take one weekend a month and devote it to family activities. Pull out the board games and puzzles, serve up some treats, or have a picnic. Even without leaving home, you'll feel like you've really had some time away. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Cop Block Radio is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, August 13th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.88 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,306 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $549. Antiwar.com reports, the latest Gaza ceasefire continues to hold and the Cairo-based peace talks seem to still be making good progress, despite Israeli officials warning of significant gaps that remain before a long-term truce can be finalized. The biggest gap may not be in the negotiations themselves, but in the Israeli Security Cabinet, where Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has an uphill battle in trying to convince many to accept peace on any terms. Defense Minister Moshe Yalan, who is seen as on Netanyahu's side in the cabinet, seems to be trying to reassure the hawks that peace isn't imminent, insisting that the Gaza operation could be far from over. The most recent reports suggest the deal in principle already involves expanding Gaza's fishing zone zone from three miles to six, with Israel promising to expand it to 12 in the future. Israel also promises to ease travel between Gaza and the West Bank and increase the amount of trucks allowed to bring merchandise into the Strip. The big sticking point remains the construction of a UN-managed seaport and or reopening the Gaza International Airport. Israel insists it isn't prepared to discuss either, though this may be just a negotiating tactic. 
In the spirit of Motorhome Diaries and Liberty on Tour, I intend to take the message of peace, love, and liberty on the road. During the 104-day trip, I'll be visiting at least 10 cities across the country, speaking to people about the ideas of peace, love, and liberty. To find out more about the tour or to donate, visit GoFundMe.com slash FPPCC. That's GoFundMe.com slash FPPCC. The Washington Post reports a federal judge on Tuesday upheld Maryland's ban on assault weapons and large capacity magazines. The law banning the guns, which was passed in May of 2013, was challenged in court by a group of nine plaintiffs, including gun stores, gun ownership organizations, and individuals. U.S. District Judge Catherine C. Blake wrote, Upon review of all the party's evidence, the court seriously doubts that the banned assault long guns are commonly possessed for lawful purposes, particularly so self-defense at the home, which is the core of the Second Amendment right. She concluded as well that the act substantially serves the government's interest in protecting public safety. The U.S. Supreme Court declared in the landmark Heller case, which struck down the District of Columbia's ban in 2008, that individuals have the right to gun ownership. But, Blake wrote, states have the power to regulate that right. Maryland's law, which was passed five months after the mass shooting in an elementary school in Newtown, Connecticut, made the possession or sell of an assault weapon or a magazine capable of holding more than 10 rounds of ammunition a misdemeanor in Maryland. A federal law banning assault weapons expired in 2004. A few other states banned the weapons. Most of the nine plaintiffs who tried to take down the ban declined or did not respond to requests for comment on Tuesday afternoon. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760 Antiwar.com reports, Ukrainian army officials insisted there is no deal in place for the Russian aid convoy which departed Moscow and that they will block it from entering Ukrainian territory. Ukrainian officials insisted any aid deliveries had to be done through the Red Cross and that the aid would have to be transferred to Red Cross vehicles before entering Ukraine, which despite all the complaining is exactly what Russia already said they were planning to do. The Russian convoy is expected to arrive at the border in two days and will offload its massive cargo of humanitarian aid to the Red Cross. The convoy will then be accompanied by OSCE representatives during the brief trip from the border to Luhansk. The lag between the convoy leaving Moscow and reaching the border will hopefully give the Red Cross more time to sort things out with the Ukrainian military, though at the same time it means Ukraine will likely continue to treat the shipment as some sort of military incursion, despite Russia promising not to accompany it with any armed escorts. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Following reports of a newly posted job listing at area marketing firm Swenson Digital, The Onion spoke to a few of the 1,400 applicants who claim they are, quote, absolutely perfect for this position. When I first saw this opening, I knew it was right for me. I've got tons of experience. I've got all the skills they're looking for. If you look at my resume, I've got everything they're looking for. I mean, I've held similar jobs like this in the past. I'm extremely driven. I really think this is going to work out. I've got a BA in marketing, which the posting said was recommended, so I think that'll bode really well for me. I've had plenty of team experience, and I think that would stand out, not to mention the fact that I'm great with web design and HTML, and pretty proficient with Excel and PowerPoint. Also, I think the culture is very me, you know. I think I'd fit in well with the other employees. I also think I had a great resume and cover letter. I think as soon as they interview me, they'll see I'm the perfect candidate. As of this video's release, Swenson Digital had extended a job offer to an applicant who happens to be a friend of the boss's son. This is the Onion News Network.